Ulysses by James Joyce, Chapter Seventeen D, read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. What did the second drawer contain? Documents: the birth certificate of Leopold Paula Bloom, an endowment assurance policy of five hundred pounds in the Scottish Widows Assurance Society, intestated Millicent Milly Bloom coming into force at twenty-five years as with profit policy of four hundred and thirty pounds four hundred and sixty two pounds ten shillings and five hundred pounds at sixty years or death sixty-five years or death and death respectively or with profit policy paid up of two hundred and ninety nine pounds ten shillings together with cash payment of one hundred and thirty three pounds ten shillings at option a bank passbook issued by the ulster bank college green branch showing the statement of a c for half year ending thirty one december nineteen o three balance in depositors favor eighteen pounds fourteen shillings sixpence sterling net personality Certificate of possession of nine hundred pounds. Canadian four per cent inscribed government stock, free of stamp duty. Dockets of the Catholic Cemeteries Glass and Veen Committee, relative to a grave plot purchased. A local press cutting concerning change of name by deed poll. Quote the textual terms of this notice. I, Rudolf Verig, now resident at number 52 Clans Russell Street, Dublin, formerly of Zambethli in the Kingdom of Hungary, hereby give notice that I have assumed and intend henceforth upon all occasions and at all times to be known by the name of Rudolf Bloom. What other objects relative to Rudolf Bloom, born Virag, were in the second drawer? an indistinct daguerreotype of Rudolf Virag and his father Leopold Virag, executed in the year 1852 in the portrait Antelier of their, respectively, first and second cousin Stefan Virag of Zesfehervar, Hungary. An ancient Haggadah book in which a pair of horn-rimmed convex spectacles inserted mark the passage of thanksgiving in the ritual prayers for Pesach, Passover. A photocard of the Queen's Hotel, Ennis, proprietor Rudolf Bloom. An envelope addressed to my dear son Leopold. What fractions of phrases did the lecture of those five whole words invoke? Tomorrow we will Tomorrow will be a week that I received. It is no use, Leopold, to be with your dear mother. That is not more to stand. To her all from me is out. Be kind to Athos, Leopold. My dear son, always of me. Thus hers, got, dine. What reminiscences of a human subject suffering from progressive melancholia did these objects evoke in bloom? An old man, widower, unkempt of hair, in bed, with head covered, sighing. An infirm dog, Athos, aconite restored to by increasing doses of grains and scruples resorted to by increasing doses of grains and scruples as a palliative of recrudescent neuralgia the faith in death of a septuagenarian suicide by poison why did bloom experience a sentiment of remorse because in immature impatience he had treated with disrespect certain beliefs and practices, as the prohibition of the use of flesh meat and milk in one meal, the hebdomadary symposium of incoordinately abstract, perfervidly concrete mercantile co ex religionist ex compatriots, the circumstances of male infants. The supernatural character of Judaic scripture, 
the ineffability of the tetragrammaton, the sanctity of the Sabbath. How did these beliefs and practices now appear to him? None more rational than they had then appeared, not less rational than other beliefs and practices now appeared. What first reminiscence had he of Rudolf Bloom, deceased? Rudolf Bloom, deceased, narrated to his son Leopold Bloom, aged six, a retrospective arrangement of migrations and settlements in and between Dublin, London, Florence, Milan, Vienna, Budapest, Zombathely, with statements of satisfaction, his grandfather having seen Maria Theresa, Empress of Austria, Queen of Hungary. With commercial advice, having taken care of pence, the pounds have taken care of themselves. Leopold Bloom, aged six, had accompanied these narrations by constant consultation had accompanied these narrations by constant consultation of a geographical map of Europe, political, and by suggestions for the establishment of affiliated business premises in the various centers mentioned. Had time equally but differently obliterated the memory of these migrations in narrator and listener? In narrator, by the excess of years and in consequence of the use of narcotic toxin, in listener, by the excess of years, in consequence of the action of distraction upon vicarious experiences. What idiosyncrasies of the narrator were concomitant products of amnesia? Occasionally he ate without having previously removed his hat, Occasionally he drank voraciously the juice of gooseberry fool from an inclined plate. Occasionally he removed from his lips the traces of food by means of lacerated envelope or other accessible fragment of paper. What two phenomena of sentence were more frequent? The myopic digital calculation of coins, eructation consequent upon repletion. What object offered partial consolidation for these reminiscences? The endowment policy, the bank passport, the certificate of the possession of script. Reduce Bloom by cross-multiplication of reverses of fortune, from which these supports protected him, and by elimination of all positive values to a negligible negative irrational unreal quantity successively in descending helotic order. Poverty, that of the outdoor hawker of imitation jewelry, the dun for the recovery of bad and doubtful debts, the poor rate and deputy cess collector. Mendicancy, that of the fraudulent bankrupt and with negligible assets paying one shilling, four pence, in the pound, sandwich man, distributor of throwaways, nocturnal vagrant, insinuating sycophant, maimed sailor, blind stripling, superannuated bailiff's man, mar feast, lick plate, spoil sport, pick thank, eccentric public laughingstock seated on bench of public park under discarded perforated umbrella, destitution. The inmate of Old Man's House, Royal Hospital, Kilmainham. The inmate of Simpson's Hospital for reduced but respectable men, permanently disabled by gout or want of sight. Nader of Misery. The aged, impotent, disenfranchised, rate-supported, moribund, lunatic pauper. With which attendant indignities the unsympathetic indifference of previously amiable females, the contempt of muscular males, the acceptance of fragments of bread, the simulated ignorance of casual acquaintances, the latration of illegitimate unlicensed vagabond dogs, the infantile discharge of decomposed vegetable missiles, worth little or nothing, nothing or less than nothing. By what could such a situation be precluded? By decease, change of state. By departure, change of place. Which, preferably? The latter, by the line of least resistance. 
What considerations render departure not entirely undesirable? Constant cohabitation, impending mutual toleration of personal defects, the habit of independent purchase increasingly cultivated, the necessity to counteract by impermanent sojourn the permanence of arrest. What considerations rendered departure not rational? The parties concerned, uniting, had increased and multiplied, which being done, offspring produced and educed to maturity, the parties, if not disunited, were obliged to reunite for increase and multiplication, which was absurd. To form by reunion the original couple of uniting parties, which was impossible. What considerations rendered departure desirable? The attractive character of certain localities in Ireland and abroad, as represented in general geographic maps of polychrome design, or in special ordnance survey charts by employment of scale numerals and hatchers. In Ireland, the cliffs of Moher, the windy wilds of Connemara, Loch Ney with submerged petrified city, the Giant's Causeway, Fort Camden and Fort Carlisle, the Golden Vale of Tipperary, the Islands of Rann, the Pastures of Royal Meath, Bridget's Elm in Kildare, the Queen's Island Shipyard in Belfast, the Salmon Leap, the Lakes of Killarney. Abroad, Ceylon, with Spice Garden supplying tea to Thomas Kiernan, agent for Pulbrook, Robertson and Company, to Mincing Lane, London, E.C., 5 Dame Street, Dublin. Jerusalem, the Holy City, with Mosque of Omar and Gate of Damascus, Goal of Aspiration. The Straits of Gibraltar, the unique birthplace of Marion Tweedy. The Parthenon, containing statues of nude Grecian divinities. The Wall Street Money Market, which controlled international finance, the Plaza de Toros at La Linea, Spain, where O'Hara of the Camerons had slain the bull, Niagara, over which no human being had passed with impunity, the land of the Eskimos, eaters of soap, the forbidden country of Tibet, from which no traveler returns, the Bay of Naples, to see which was to die. The Dead Sea. Under what guidance, following what signs? At sea, Septen Trional, by night the Pole Star, located at the point of intersection of the right line from Beta to Alpha in Ursa Major, produced and divided externally at Omega, and the hypotenuse of the right-angled triangle formed by the line Alpha Omega, so produced and the line Alpha Delta of Ursum Major. On land, meridional, a bispherical moon, revealed in imperfect varying phases of lunation through the posterior interstice of the imperfectly occluded skirt of a carnos negligent pernambulating female, a pillar of the cloud by day. What public advertisement would divulge the oculation of the departed? Five pounds reward, lost, stolen, or strayed from his residence, 7 Eccles Street, missing gent about 40, answering to the name of Bloom, Leopold, Poldy, height 5 feet 9.5 inches, full build, olive complexion, may have since grown a beard, when last seen was wearing a black suit. Above sum will be paid for information leading to his discovery. What universal binomial denominations would be his as entity and non-entity? Assumed by any or known to none. Every man or no man. What tributes his? Honor and gifts of strangers, the friends of every man. A nymph immortal beauty the bride of no man. Would the departed never nowhere know how reappear? 
ever would he wander self-compelled to the extreme limit of his cometary orbit beyond the fixed stars and variable suns and telescopic planets astronomical waifs and strays to the extreme boundary of space passing from land to land among peoples amid events somewhere imperceptible he would hear and somehow reluctantly sun compelled obey the summons of recall whence disappearing from the constellation of the northern crown he would somehow reappear reborn above delta in the constellation of cassiopeia after incalculable eons of peregyrination return an estranged avenger a wrecker of justice on malefactors a dark crusader a sleeper awakened with financial resources by supposition surpassing those of rothschild or the silver king what would render such return irrational an unsatisfactory equation between an exodus and return in time through reversible space and an exodus and return in space through irreversible time what play of forces induced inertia rendered departure undesirable the lateness of the hour rendering procrastinatory the obscurity of the night rendering invisible the uncertainty of thoroughfares rendering perilous the necessity for repose obviating movement the proximity of an occupied bed obviating research the anticipation of warmth human tempered with coolness linen obviating desire and rendering desirable the state of narcissus sound without echo desired desire what advantages were possessed by an occupied as distinct from an unoccupied bed? The removal of nocturnal solitude, the superior quality of human, mature female, to inhuman, hot water jar, calification, the stimulation of matutinal contact, the economy of mangling done on the premises in the case of trousers accurately folded and placed lengthwise between the spring mattress striped and the woolen mattress biscuit section what past consecutive causes before rising pre-apprehended of accumulated fatigue did bloom before rising silently recapitulate the preparation of breakfast burnt offering intestinal congestion and premeditative defecation holy of holies the bath rite of john the funeral rite of samuel the advertisement of alexander keys orum and thummim the unsubstantial lunch the rite of melchizedek the visit to museum and natural library holy place the book hunt along bedford row merchant's arch wellington quay simach torah the music in the ormond hotel shira shiram the altercation with a truculent troglodyte in bernard kiernan's premises holocaust a blank period of time including a car drive a visit to a house of mourning a leave-taking wilderness the eroticism produced by feminine exhibitionism right of onan the prolonged delivery of mrs minor purefoy heave offering the visit to the disorderly house of mrs bella cohen eighty two tyrone street lower and subsequent brawl and chance medley in beaver street armageddon nocturnal preambulation to and from the cabman shelter butt bridge atonement what self-imposed enigma did bloom about to rise in order to go so as to conclude lest he should not conclude involuntarily apprehend the cause of a brief sharp unforeseen heard loud lone crack emitted by the insentient material of a strain-veined timber table what self-involved enigma did bloom risen going gathering multiform multitudinous garments voluntarily apprehending not comprehend who is 
Macintosh. What self-evident enigma pondered with the zultery constancy during thirty years did bloom now, having affected natural obscurity by the extinction of artificial light, silently, suddenly comprehend? Where was Moses when the candle went out? What imperfections in a perfect day did Bloom, walking, charged with collecting articles of recent divested male wearing apparel, silently, successively enumerate? A provisional failure to obtain renewal of an advertisement, to obtain a certain quantity of tea from Thomas Kiernan, agent for Pulbrook, Robertson and Company, 5 Dame Street, Dublin, and 2 Mincing Lane, London, E.C. To certify the presence or absence of posterior rectal orifice in the case of Hellenic female divinities to obtain admission, gratuitous or paid, to the performance of Leah by Bandmaster Palmer at the Gaiety Theatre, 46, 47, 48, 49, South King Street. What impression of an absent face did Bloom, arrested, silently recall? The face of her father, the late Major Brian Cooper Tweedy, Royal Dublin Fusiliers of Gibraltar and Rio Bath, Dolphin's Barn. What recurrent impressions of the same were possible by hypotheses? Retreating at the terminus of the Great Northern Railway, Ammon Street, with constant uniform acceleration, along parallel lines reproduced from infinity, with constant uniform retardation, at the terminus of the Great Northern Railway, Ammon Street, returning. What miscellaneous effects of female personal wearing apparel were perceived by him? A pair of new, inodorous, half-silk black ladies' hose, a pair of new violet garters, a pair of outsized ladies' drawers of India mull, cut on generous lines, redolent of apopanax, jessamine, and Marathi's Turkish cigarettes, and containing a long, brief steel safety pin, folded curvy linear, a camisole of batiste with thin lace border, an accordion underskirt of blue silk moret, all these objects being disposed irregularly on the top of a rectangular trunk, quadruple battened, having capped corners with multicolored labels, initially on its foreside in white lettering, B C T, Brian Cooper Tweedy. What impersonal objects were perceived? A commode, one leg fractured, totally covered by square cretonne cutting, apple design, in which rested ladies' black straw hats, orange keyed wear, brought of Henry Price, basket, fancy goods, chinaware and ironmongery manufacture, disposed irregularly on the washstand and floor, and consisting of basin, soap dish, and brush tray on the washstand together pitcher and night article on the floor separate. Bloom's axe. Bloom's axe. He deposited the articles of clothing on a chair, removing his remaining articles of clothing, took from beneath the bolster at the head of the bed a folded long white nightshirt, inserted his head and arms into the proper apertures of the nightshirt, removing a pillow from the head to the foot of the bed, prepared the bed linen accordingly, and entered the bed. How? with circumspection, as invariably when entering an abode, his own or not his own, with solicitude, the snake spiral springs of the mattress being old, the brass quoits and pendant viper radii loose and tremulous, under the stress and strain, prudently, as entering a lair or ambush of lust or adders, lightly, the least to disturb reverently, the bed of conception and of birth, of consummation of marriage, and of breach of consummation of marriage, and breach of marriage, of sleep, and of death. What did his limbs, when gradually extended, encounter? New clean bed linen, 
additional odors, the presence of a human form, female, hers, the imprint of a human form, male, not his, some crumbs, some flakes of potted meat, recooked, which he removed. If he had smiled, why would he have smiled? To reflect that each one who enters imagines himself to be the first to enter, whereas he is always the last of a preceding series, if the first of a succeeding one, each imagining himself to be first, last, only and alone, whereas he is neither first nor last, nor only nor alone in a series of originating in and repeatedly to infinity. What preceding series? Assuming Mulvey to be the first term of his series, Penrose, Bartel D'Arcy, the Professor Goodwin, Julius Matinansky, John Henry Menton, Father Bernard Corrigan, a farmer at the Royal Dublin Society's Horse Show, Maggot O'Reilly, Matthew Dillon, Valentine Blake Dillon, Lord Mayor of Dublin, Christopher Callanan, Lenahan, an Italian organ grinder, an unknown gentleman in the Gaiety Theatre, Benjamin Dollard, Simon Dedalus, and Andrew Pisser Burke, Joseph Cuffey, Wisdom Healy, Alderman John Hooper, Dr. Francis Brady, Father Sebastian of Mount Argus, a bootblack at the General Post Office, Hugh E. Blazes Boylan, and so each, and so on to no last term. What were his reflections concerning the last members of this series and late occupant of the bed? Reflections on his vigor, a bounder, corporal proposition, a bill-sticker, commercial ability, a bester, impressionability, a boaster. Why for the observer impressionability, in addition to rigor, corporal proportion, and commercial ability? Because he had observed with augmenting frequency in the preceding members of the same series the same concupiscence, inflammably transmitted, first with alarm, then with understanding, then with desire, and finally with fatigue with alternating symptoms of epicene comprehension and apprehension. With what antagonistic sentiments were his subsequent reflections affected? Envy, jealousy, abdignation, equanimity. Envy? Of a boldly and mental male organism specially adapted for the superincumbent posture of energetic human copulation and energetic piston and cylinder movement necessary for the complete satisfaction of a constant but not acute concupiscence resident in a bodily and mentally female organism, passive but not obtuse. Jealousy? because a nature full and violet in its free state was alternately the agent and reagent of attraction, because attraction between agents and reagents at all instants varied with inverse proportion of increase and decrease, with incessant circular extension and radial reentrance, with incessant circular extension and radial reentrance because the controlled contemplation of the fluctuation of attraction produced if desired if desired a fluctuation of pleasure abdignation in virtue of a acquaintance initiated in september nineteen o three in the establishment of george messias merchant tailor and outfitter five eden quay b Hospitality extended and received in kind, reciprocated and reapportioned in person. C. Comparative youth subject to impulses of ambition and magnanimity. Collegual altruism and amorous egoism. D. Extraracial attraction, intraracial inhibition, superracial prerogative. E. An eminent provincial musical tour, common current expenses, net proceeds divided. 
equanimity as as natural as any and every natural act of a nature expressed or understood executed in natured nature by natural creatures in accordance with his her and their natured natures of dissimilar similarity as not so calamitous as a cataclysmic annihilation of the planet in consequence of a collision with a dark sun as less reprehensible than theft highway robbery cruelty to children and animals obtaining money under false pretenses forgery embezzlement misappropriation of public money betrayal of public trust malingering mayhem corruption of minors criminal libel blackmail contempt of court arson treason felony mutiny on the high seas trespass burglary jailbreaking practice of unnatural vice desertion from armed forces in the field perjury poaching usury intelligence with the king's enemies impersonation criminal assault manslaughter willful and premeditated murder as not more abnormal than all other parallel processes of adaptation to altered conditions of existence resulting in a reciprocal equilibrium between the bodily organism and its attendant circumstances foods beverages acquired habits indulged inclinations significant disease as more than inevitable irreparable why more abdignation than jealousy less envy than equanimity from outrage matrimony to out from outrage matrimony to outrage adultery there arose naught but outrage copulation yet the matrimonial violator of the matrimonially violated had not been outraged by the adulterous violator of the adulterously violated what retribution if any assassination never as two wrongs did not make one right duel by combat no divorce not now exposure by mechanical artifice automatic bed or individual testimony concealed ocular witness not yet suit for damages by legal influence or simulation of assault with evidence of injury sustained self-inflicted not impossibly hush money by moral influence possible if any positively connivance introduction of emulation material a prosperous rival agent of publicity moral a successful rival agent of intimacy deprecation alienation humiliation separation protracting separation protecting the one separated from the other protecting the separator from both by what reflections did he a conscious reactor against the void of incertainty justify to himself his sentiments the preordained frangibility of the hymen the presupposed intangibility of the thing in itself the incongruity and disproportion between the self-prolonging tension of the thing proposed to be done and the self-abbreviating relaxation of the thing done the fallaciously inferred debility of the female the mascularity of the male the variations of the ethical codes the natural grammatical transition by inversion involving no alteration of sense of an the variations of ethical codes the natural grammatical transition by inversion involving no alteration of sense of an aorist preterite proposition parsed as masculine subject monosyllabic onomatopoetic transitive verb with direct feminine object from the active voice into its correlative aorist preterite proposition parsed as feminine subject auxiliary verb and quasi monosyllabic onomatopoetic past participle with complementary masculine agent in the passive voice the continued product of seminators by generation the continual production of semen by distillation the futility of triumph or protest or vindication 
the inanity of extolled virtue, the lethargy of nascent matter, the apathy of the stars. In what final satisfaction did these antagonistic sentiments and reflections, reduced to their simplest forms, converge? Satisfaction at the ubiquity in eastern and western terrestrial hemispheres, in all habitable lands and islands explored or unexplored the land of the midnight sun, the islands of the blessed, the isles of Greece, the land of promise, of adipose anterior and posterior female hemispheres, redolent of milk and honey, and of excretory sanguine and seminal warmth, reminiscent of secular families of curves of amplitude, insusceptible of moods, of impression or contrarieties of expression expressed of mute immutable mature animality the visible signs of anti-satisfaction an approximate erection a salicious aversion a gradual elevation a tentative a tentative revelation a silent contemplation then he kissed the plump, mellow, yellow, smellow melons of her rump, on each plump, melonious hemisphere, in their mellow, yellow furrow, with obscure, prolonged, provocative, melon melanous osculation. The visible signs of post-satisfaction, a silent contemplation, a tentative velation, a gradual abasement, a solicitous aversion, a proximate erection. What followed this silent action? Somnolent invocation, less somnolent recognition, incipient excitation, catechetical interrogation. With what modifications did the narrator reply to this interrogation? Negative. He omitted to mention the clandestine correspondence between Martha Clifford and Henry Flower, the public altercation at, in, and in the vicinity of the licensed premise of Bernard Kiernan and Company Limited, 8, 9, and 10 Little Britain Street, the erotic provocation and response thereto caused by the exhibitionism of Gertrude, Gertie, surname unknown. Positive. He included mention of a performance by Mrs. Bandman Palmer of Leah at the Gaiety Theatre, 46, 47, 48, 49 South King Street, an invitation to supper at Winans Murphy's Hotel, 35, 36, and 37 Lower Abbey Street, a volume of Peckhaminous Pornographical Tendency entitled Sweets of Sin. A temporary concussion caused by a falsely calculated movement in the course of a post-senal gymnastic display, the victim, since completely recovered, being Stephen Dedalus, professor and author, eldest living son of Simon Dedalus, of no fixed occupation, an aeronautical feat executed by him, narrator, in the presence of a witness, the professor and author aforesaid with promptitude of decision and gymnastic flexibility. Was the narration otherwise unaltered by modifications? Absolutely. Which event or person emerged as the salient point of his narration? Stephen Dedalus, professor and author. What limitations of activity and inhibitions of conjugal rights were perceived by listener and narrator concerning themselves during the course of this intermittent and increasingly more laconic narration? By the listener, a limitation of fertility inasmuch as marriage had been celebrated one calendar month after the 18th anniversary of her birth, 8 September 1870, viz. 8 October, and consummated on the same date with female issue born 15th June 1889, having been anticipatorily consummated on the 10th September of the same year, and complete carnal intercourse with ejaculation of semen within the natural female organ, having last taken place five weeks previously, viz. 27 November 1893, to the birth on 29 December 
December 1893 of second and only male issue, deceased 9 January 1894, aged 11 days. There remained a period of 10 years, 5 months, and 18 days, during which carnal intercourse had been incomplete, without ejaculation of semen within the natural female organ. By the narrator, a limitation of activity, mental and corporal, inasmuch as complete mental intercourse between himself and the listener had not taken place since the consummation of puberty, indicated by catametic hemorrhaging of the female issue of narrator and listener. 15 September 1903, there remained a period of nine months and one day during which, in consequence of a pre-established natural comprehension of incomprehension between the consummated female, listener, and issue, complete corporal liberty of action had been circumscribed. How? By various reiterated female interrogation concerning the masculine designation whither, the place where, the time at which, the duration for which, the object with which, in the case of temporary absences, projected or effected. What moved visibly above the listener's and the narrator's invisible thoughts? The upcast reflection of a lamp and shade, an inconsistent series of concentric circles of varying gradations of light and shadow. In what directions did listener and narrator lie? Listener southeast by east, narrator northwest by west, on the 53rd parallel of latitude north and 6th meridian of longitude west, at an angle of 45 degrees to the terrestrial equator. In what state of rest or motion? At rest relative to themselves and to each other in motion, being each and both carried westward, forward and reward respectively, by the proper perpetual motion of the earth through ever-changing tracts of never-changing space. In what posture? Listener. Reclined semilaterally, left, left hand under head, right leg extended in a straight line and resting on left leg, flexed in the attitude of Gaetellus, fulfilled, recumbent, big with seed. Narrator, reclined laterally, left, with right and left legs flexed, the index finger and thumb of the right hand resting on the bridge of the nose, in the attitude depicted in a snapshot photograph made by Percy Apjohn, the child man weary, the child man in the womb. Womb? Weary? He rests. He has traveled. With? Sinbad, Sinbad the, the sailor, sailor and Tinbad the tailor, tailor and Jinbad the jailer and Ninbad the whaler and Ninbad the nailer and Finbad the failer and Finbad the failer and Pinbad the pailer and Ninbad the mailer and Hinbad the hailer and Rinbad the railer and Dinbad the kailer and Finbad the quailer and Linbad the yeller and Zinbad the yeller and Zinbad the failer. When? Going to dark bed, there was a square round Sinbad the sailor's rock's ox egg in the night of the bed of all the ox of the rocks of darken bed the bright daler. Where? End of chapter 17d. End of chapter 17. The Ithaca section of James Joyce's Ulysses. This recording is in the public domain. Ulysses by James Joyce, section 18a. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lauren Costanza, Jack Evans, Jennifer Hilkauker, Krista Manning, Kara Repert, Dan Weber, and Cassandra Westover. Yes, yes. yes. Because, because he never did a thing like that before, as asked to get his breakfast in bed with a couple of eggs. Couple of eggs. Since the City Arms Hotel, when he used to be pretending to be laid up with a sick voice. 
do it in his highness to make himself interesting for that old faggot, Mrs. Reardon. That he thought he had a great leg. That he thought he had a great leg. That she never left us far at all from mass. All from mass and for herself and her soul. Greatest miser ever was. Actually afraid to lay out 4D for her methylated spirit. Telling me all her ailments. She had too much old chat in her. About politics and earthquakes and the end of the world. Let us have a bit of fun. God help the world if all the women were her sort. Down on, down on bathing suits and low necks. Of course, nobody wanted her to wear them. Suppose she was pious because no man would look at her twice. I hope I'll, I hope I'll never be like her. I wonder she didn't want us to cover our faces. But she was a well-educated woman, certainly, and her gabby talk about Mr. Reardon here and Mr. Reardon there. I suppose he was glad to get shot at her. And her dog still smelling my fur and always edging to get up under my petticoat. Especially then. Especially then. Still, I like that in him. Polite to old women like that. And waiters and beggars, too. He's not proud out of nothing, but not always. If ever he got anything really serious the matter with him, it's much better for them to go into a hospital where everything is clean. But I suppose I'd have to bring it into him for a month. Yes, and then we'd have a hospital nurse next thing on the carpet. Have him staying there till they throw him out, or a nun, maybe. Like the smutty photo he has. She's as much a nun as I am not. Yes, 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 because they're so, so weak so and puling when they're sick, sick and they want a woman to get well. They want a woman to get well. If his nose bleeds, you'd think it was, oh, tragic. And that, and that dying looking one off the South Circular, when he sprained his foot at the choir party at the Sugarloaf Mountain the day I wore that dress. Miss Stack bringing him flowers, the worst old ones she could find at the bottom of the basket. Anything at all to get into a man's bedroom. With her old maid's voice trying to imagine him dying on account of her. To never see that face again. No, he looked, he more, looked like more like a man with his beard a bit grown. In the bed, bed I thought that was the same. same. Besides, I hate bandaging and dosing. When he cut his toe with a razor pairing corns, afraid he'd get blood poisoning. Blood poisoning. But, blood but if it was a thing I was saying, I was Then we'd see what Then we'd see what attention. Only, of course, the woman hides it not to give all the trouble they do. Yes, he came somewhere, I'm sure, by his appetite. Anyway, love it's not, or he'd be off his feet speaking of her. So either it was one of those night women, if it was down there he was really, and the hotel story he made up, a pack of lies to hide it, planning it. Planning it. Hines, Hines kept me. Who did I meet? Oh, yes, I, met. Yes, I met. Do you remember Menton? Do you remember Menton? Who, who, who let me see that big baby face? Saw I saw him, I saw and he not long married, flirting with a young girl at Poole's Miriorama, and turned my back on him. I turned my back on him, and he out. slinked out quite looking quite conscious. conscious. What harm? What harm? Yeah, but he had the impudence to make up to me one time. Well done to him, Love almighty in his boiled eyes. All the big stupas I ever met. I ever met. And that's called a slister only for him. Or else if it's not that it's some little bitch or other who got in with somewhere or picked up on the sly. If they only knew him as well as I do. If they only knew him as well as I do. Yes, because the day before yesterday he was scribbling something, a letter. When I came into the front room to show him Dignam's death in the paper, as if something told me. And he covered it up with the blotting tape, pretending to be thinking about business. So very probably that was it. To somebody who thinks she has a soft in him. Because all men get a bit like that at his age. Especially getting on to 40. He is now. So as to wheedle any money she can out of him. No fool like an old fool. Then the usual kissing my bottom was to hide it. But I care two straws now who he doesn't with. I knew before that. I before that. I would like to find out so long as I don't have the two of them under my nose all the time like that slut. That Mary we had in Ontario Terrace patting out her false bottom to excite him bad enough to get the smell of those painted women off him. Once or twice I had a suspicion by getting him to come near me when I found the long hair on his coat. Without that one, without that one, when I went into the kitchen pretending he was drinking water, one woman is not enough for them. It was all his fault. It was all his fault. And proposing that she could eat at our table on Christmas Day. If you please. Oh no, thank you. Not in my house. Stealing my potatoes and the oysters. Two six per dozen. Going out. Going out to see her aunt. If you please. Common robbery so it was. But I was sure he had something on with that one. It takes me to find out a thing like that, he said. You have you no, have proof, no it proof it was her. Her aunt was very fond her of oysters. Her aunt was very fond of oysters. But I told her what I thought of her, suggesting me to go out to be alone with her. I wouldn't lower myself to spy on them. The garters I found in her room the Friday she was out, that was enough for me. A little bit too much.
Her face, face swelled, swelled up on her with temper when I gave her her weeks notice. I saw to that. that. I saw I saw to that. that. I saw better, that. Do better, do better do without, do without them all together. Do out the rooms myself. Quicker only for the damn cooking than throwing out the dirt. She gave it to him anyhow. Either she or me. I couldn't even touch him if I thought he was with a dirty, barefaced liar and sloven like that one. Denying it up to my face and singing about the place in the WC, too. Because she knew she was too well off. Yes, because he couldn't possibly do without it that long. So he must do it somewhere. And when the last time he came on my bottom, when was it? Night Boiling gave my hand a Boiling gave my hand a great squeeze, going along by the token in my ears. There steals another. I just pressed the back of his I just the back of his like that with my thumb to squeeze back singing. Young May Moon, she's beaming love. Because he has an idea about me. He's not such a fool. I'm dining out. He said, I'm dining out and going to the gaiety, though I'm not going to give him the satisfaction. In any case, God knows. He's a change, in a way, not to be always, to be always wearing, wearing the same old hat, hat, unless I paid unless some nice-looking boy to do it, since I can't do it myself. A young boy would like me. I'd confuse him a little, alone with him. If we were, I'd let him see my garter, new ones, new ones, and make him turn red looking at him, to seduce him. I know what boys feel with that down in their cheek, doing that frigging drawing out the thing by the hour, question and answer. Would you do this, that, and the other with the Coleman? Coleman? Yes. yes. With the bishop? With the bishop? Yes, I would. I would. Because I told him about some dean or bishop was sitting beside me in the Jews' temples' gardens when I was knitting that woolen thing. A stranger to Dublin. A place was it. And so on. And so on about the monuments. And he tired me out with statues, encouraging him, making him worse than he is. Who is in mind now? Tell me who is in Who is it? Tell me his name. Tell me his name. Who is the German emperor? Who is the German emperor? Is it? Yes, imagine, imagine. Yeah. Think, of Think of him. Can you feel him trying to make a whore of me? Trying to make a whore of me. Trying to make a whore of me. You have to give it up now at his age of his life. Simply ruination for any woman, and no satisfaction. Pretending to like it till he comes, and then finish it off myself anyway. And it makes your lips. It makes your lips pale. Anyhow, it's done now, once and for all with all the talk of the world about it. People make it's only the first time. After that, it's just the ordinary do it and think no more about it. Why can't you kiss a man without going and going marrying, and marrying him, first? him first? You sometimes love too wildly when you feel that way. So nice all over you. You can't help yourself. I wish some, I wish manner, some man or other would take me there there and Kiss me in his arms. Kiss me There's nothing like a kiss. Long and hot down to your soul, almost paralyzes you. Then I hate that confession when I used to go to Father Corrigan. He touched me, Father. And what harm if he did? Where? And I said, on the canal bank, like a fool. But whereabouts on your, on your person, my child? On the leg behind. High up, was it? Yes, rather high. Yes, rather high up. Was it where you sit down? Sit down, yes, oh Lord. Couldn't he say bottom right out and have done with it? What has that got to do with it? And did you... And did you, you put it, and I forget. Whatever, no, whatever, Father. Forget. And I always think no, of the real Father. What did he what want did he to know for when, when I already confessed it to God? He had a nice fat hand, the palm moist always. I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind feeling it. Neither would he, he I'd say. By the bull neck and his horse collar, I wonder, did he know me in the box? I could see his face. He couldn't see mine. Of course, he'd never turn or let on. Still, his eyes were red when his father died. They're lost for a woman, of course. Must be terrible when a man cries, let alone them. I'd like to be embraced by one in his vestments, and the smell of incense off him like the Pope's. Besides, there's no danger with a priest, if you're married. He's too careful about himself. Then give something to his holiness, the Pope, for a penance. I wonder, was he satisfied with me? One thing I didn't like, I didn't like is laughing me behind going away so familiarly in the hall. Though I laugh, though I laugh, I'm not a horse or an ass. I suppose he was thinking of his father. I wonder, is he awake thinking of me or dreaming? Am I in it? Who gave him that flower he said he bought? He smells of some kind of drink. Not whiskey or stout or perhaps the sweetie kind of paste they stick their bills up with. Stick their bills some up with. Some liqueur I'd like to sip. Those rich-looking green and yellow yeah, expensive drinks. drinks. Those stay store Johnny's drinks. drinks. The opera has I tasted once with my finger. The dead of that American that had the squirrel. Talking stamps with father.
He had all he could do to keep himself from falling asleep after the last time. After we took the port and potted meat. had a fine salty taste. Fine salty taste, yes. yes. Because I felt lovely and tired myself. And fell asleep as sound as a top the moment I popped straight Till that thunder woke me up. Till that thunder woke me up. God be merciful to us, I thought. The heavens were coming down about us. To punish us. When I blessed myself and said a Hail Mary like those awful thunderbolts. Like those awful thunderbolts in Gibraltar. As if the world was coming to an end. And then they come and tell you there's no God. What could you do if it was running and rushing about Only make an act of contrition. The candlelight lit that evening in Whitefriars Street Chapel for the month of May. See, it brought its luck. Though he'd scoff. Though he'd scoff if he heard me. Because he never goes to church mass or meetings. He says your soul. Your soul. You have no soul. Inside only pray now. Because he doesn't know what it is to have. Yes, when I lit the lamp. Because he must have come three or four times with that tremendous big red brute of a thing he has. I thought the vein or whatever the dickens they, they call it was going to was burst. Going to burst. So his nose is not so big. After I took off all my things with the blinds down, after my hours dressing and perfuming and combing, it like iron or some kind of thick crowbar standing all the time. He must have eaten oysters. He must have eaten oysters. I think a few dozen. He was in great singing voice. Oh, I never in all my life felt anyone had one the size of that. To make you feel full up. Full up. He must have eaten a whole sheep. After, what's the idea yeah, of making us like that? Like that. With, a big hole With a big hole in the middle of us. Or like a stallion driving it up into you. Because that's all, because they, want that's all they want out of you. With that determined, vicious look in his eye. I had to have shut, shut my eyes. Still, Still, he has not such a tremendous, tremendous amount of spunk in him. When I made him pull out, and do it all. Considering how big it is. So much the better in case any of it wasn't washed out properly. The last time I let him finish it in me. Nice invention they made for women. For him to get all the pleasure. But if someone gave them a touch of it themselves, they'd know what I went through with Millie. Nobody would believe cutting her teeth, too. And Mina Purefoy's husband. Mina Purefoy's husband. Give, Give us a swing, swing out of your whiskers, whiskers filling, filling her up with a child. child with twins once a year as regular as the clock, always with, always with a smell of children off her. The one they called budgers or something. Like a knitting with a shock of hair on it. Jesus, Jack, the child of the black. The last time I was there, a squatter falling over falling another, falling out of Hear, you couldn't hear your, you couldn't ears, hear supposed your ears supposed to be healthy. Not, not satisfied till they have us swollen out like, like elephants, or I don't know what. Supposing I risked having, having another not off him, though still, if he was married, I'm sure he'd have a fine, strong child. But I don't know. Poldy has more spunk in him. Yes, that'd be awfully jolly. I suppose it was meeting Josie Powell and the funeral. And thinking about me and Boylan set him off. Well, he can well, think what he likes now. He likes That'll, now. Do, him That'll do him any good. I know they were spooning a bit when I came on the scene. Dancing and he was dancing, he was dancing and sitting, and sitting out with her the night, night of Georgina Simpson's, Simpson's housewarming. housewarming. And then he wanted to ram it down my neck. It was on account of not liking to see her a wallflower. That was why we had to stand up row over politics. He began it, not me. When he said about our Lord being a carpenter, at last he made me cry. Of course, a woman was so sensitive about everything. About everything. About everything. I was fuming with was myself, fuming after, with myself giving after forgiving him. Only for I knew he was gone on me. The first and the first socialist he said he was. He annoyed me so much. I couldn't put him into a temper. He mixed up, yeah, mixed up things, especially about the body and the inside. I often wanted to study up that myself, what we have inside us. And that family, and that family physician, I could always hear his voice talking when his room was crowded and why him. After, that, After that, that, I pretended I had a coolness on with her over him, because he used to be a bit on the jealous side. Whenever he asked, Whenever he asked who are you going to, and I said, over to Flowey, and he made me the present of Byron's poems and the three pairs of gloves, so that finished that. I could quite easily get him to make it up any time. I know how I'd... Even supposing he got in with her again and was going, out, going out to see her somewhere. I'd know if he refused to eat the onions. I know plenty of ways. Ask him to tuck down the collar of my blouse. 
or touch him with my veil and gloves on. Going out, I kiss, then would send them all spinning. However, however, all right, all right we'll, we'll see, see then. then. Let, Let him go to her. She, of course, she, of course would only be too delighted to pretend she's mad and love with him. That I wouldn't so much mind. I wouldn't so much I just go to her and I just go to her and ask her, "Do you love him?" And look her square in the eyes. She but he might fool me. But he, but he might imagine he was and make a declaration to her with his blabbery kind of a manner like he did to me. Though I had the devil's own job to get it out of him, though. I liked him for that. It showed he could, it showed he could hold me to be got for the asking. For the asking. He, was he was on the top of asking me, too, the night in the kitchen. I was rolling the potato cake. There's something, There's something I, want I, want to say I want to say to you. Only for I put him off when I was in a temper, temper with my hands and arms full of pasty In any case, I let out too much the night before, talking of dreams. So I didn't want to let him know more than was good for him. She used to be always in always me, Josie. Josie. Whenever he was there, meaning him, of course, glomming me over. And when I said I washed up and down as far as possible, asking me, did you wash possible? The women were always egging Putting it on thick when he's there. They know by his sly eye blinking a bit. Putting on the indifferent when they come out with something. The kind he is. Kind he is. What spoils, what spoils him, I don't wonder in the least. Because he was very handsome at that time, trying to look like Lord Byron. I said I liked him. He was too beautiful for a man. And he was a little before we got engaged. Afterwards, though, she didn't like it so much. Day I was in fits of laughing with the giggles. I couldn't stop giggles, about all my hairpins falling out. All my hairpins falling out one after another with the mass of hair I had. They're always in great humor, she said. Yes, yes, because it rigged her. Because she knew because what it, she knew what it meant. meant. Because I used to because tell her a good bit of what went on between us. Not all, but just enough to make her mouth. That wasn't my fault. She that wasn't my fault. She was much after we were married. What do what she's got like now after living with that dotty husband of hers? She had her face beginning to look drawn and run down the last time I saw her. It must have just been after a row with him, because I saw in the moment she was edging to draw down a conversation about husbands and talk about him to run him down. What was it she told me? Oh, yes, that sometimes he used to go to bed with his muddy boots on when the maggot takes him. Just imagine having to get into bed with a thing like that. That might murder you any moment. What a man. Well it's, well, it's not the, the one way, way everyone goes mad. It's not the one way everyone goes Whatever he does, always wipes his feet on the mat when he comes in wet or shine. And always blasts his own boots, too. And he always takes off his hat when he comes up in the street, up in the street like Ben. And now he's going about in slippers for 10,000 pounds for a postcard. Oh, 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 oh sweetheart oh, May. Wouldn't a thing like that bore you this to extinction? Actually, too stupid even to take his boots off. Now, what, now, what could you make of a man like that? I'd rather die 20 times over than marry another of their sex. Of course, he'd never find another woman like me to put up with him the way I do. No, me. Come sleep with me. Yes, and he knows that, too, at the bottom of his heart. Take that Mrs. Maybrick that poisoned her husband, for what I wonder, in love with some other man. In love with some other man. Yes, it was found out on her. Wasn't she the downright villain to go and do a thing like that? Of course, some men can be dreadfully aggravated, drive you mad, and drive you mad. No, it's the worst word in the world. What do they ask us to marry them for if we're so bad as all that comes to? Yes, because they can't get on without us. White arsenic she put in his tea. A flypaper, wasn't it? I wonder why they call it that. If I asked him, he'd say it's from the Greek. Leave us as wise as we were before. She must have been madly in love with the other fellow to run the chance of being hanged. Now she, oh, she didn't care. If that was me, what could she do? Besides, they're not brutes enough to go and hang them. Surely are they? Surely are they? Surely are they? Surely are they? They're all, they're all so, so different. different. Boy, when I'm talking about the shape of my foot. He noticed it once, even before he was introduced. When I was in the DBC with Polly laughing and trying to listen, I was waggling my foot. We both ordered two teas and plain bread and butter. I saw him, I saw him looking with his tools and knees and sisters and I stood up and asked the girl where it was. What do I care? What do I care? And that black clothes breeches me. And that black clothes breeches me. And that black clothes breeches me. How would you let them down? Wedding all myself. Always with some brand new fad every other week. Such a long one I did. I forgot my suede gloves on the seat behind, and I never got after some robber of a woman, and he wanted me to put it in the Irish Times. He's lost in the ladies' laboratory, DBC, Dame Street. Find a return to Mrs. Marion Bloom, and I saw his eyes on my feet going out through the turning door. He was looking when I looked back, and I went there for tea two days after in the hope 
but he wasn't now. How did that excite him? Because I was crossing there when we were in the other room first. He meant the shoes that are too tight to walk in. My hand is nice like that. If I only had a ring with the stone for my month, a nice aquamarine, I'll stick him for one. And a gold, and a gold bracelet. I don't, I don't like my foot so much. Still, I made him spend once with my foot. The night after the was at the concert. concert, so cold and windy it was. Well, we had that rum in the house to mull, and the fire. It wasn't blackout when he asked to take off my stockings, lying on the hearth rug in Lombard Street West. And another time it was my muddy boots. He'd like me to walk in all the horses dung I could find. But of course he's not natural like the rest of the world that I... What did he say? I could give nine points and ten to Caddy Lanner and beat her. What does that mean? I asked him. I forget what he said, because the stop list edition just passed and the man with the curly hair and the Luke and Derry that's so polite. I think I, I saw a safe for somewhere. I noticed when I was in the bathroom. So I took my time. Bartell Darcy, too, that he used to make fun of. When he commenced kissing me on the choir stairs after I said I'm going to drop off the knee. What are we waiting for? Oh, my heart. Kiss me straight on the brow and part, which is my brown part. He was pretty hot for all his tinny voice, too. My, my low notes he was always raving about, if you can believe him. I like the way he used his nose. And then there wasn't a terrible disaster there in a place like that. I don't see anything so terrible about it. I'll tell him about that someday. Not now. And surprise him, I. And I'll take him there and show him the very place, too, we did it. So now there you are. Like it or lump it. He thinks nothing can happen without him knowing. He had an idea about my mother till we were engaged. Otherwise, he'd never have got me so cheap as he did. He was, he was ten, ten times, times worse himself, himself anyhow, anyhow, begging me to give him a tiny bit cut off my drawers. That was, that was, that was the evening long coming long along in Kenilworth Square. Square. He kissed me in the eye of my glove, and I had to take it off, asking me questions. Is it permitted to inquire the shape of my bedroom? So I let him keep it as if I forgot it. To think of me, when I saw him slip it into his pocket, of course he's mad on the subject of drawers. That's plain to be seen. Always skeezing at those brazen-faced things on the bicycles with their skirts blowing up to their navels. Even when Millie and I were out, we were like, oh, that one in the corner that was in the middle of the night against the sun, didn't see every atom she had on. When he saw me from behind falling in the rain, I saw him before he saw me, I saw him standing at the corner of the Herald Crossroad with new raincoat on him, with the muffler and the zingari colors to show off his complexion, and the brown hat. Looking sly boots, sly boots as usual. What was he doing there where he'd no business? They can go and get whatever they like from anything at all with a skirt on it, and we're not to ask any questions. But they want to know where they want to know where were you? Where are you going? I could feel him coming along, skulking after me, his eyes on my neck. He had been keeping away from the house. He felt it was getting too warm for him, so I half turned and stopped. Then he pestered me to say yes, till I took off my gloves slowly, watching him. He said my opening work leaves were too cold for the rain. Anything for an excuse to put his hand in near me drawers or drawers the whole blessed time. I promised to give him the pair off my doll to carry about in his waistcoat pocket. Oh, Maria Santissima, he did look a big fool dreeping in the rain. Splendid set of teeth he had. Made me hungry to look at them, and beseeched of me to lift the orange petticoat I had on with the sun repeats that, that there was nobody, he said. He'd kneel down, kneel down in the wet if I didn't. So persevering, so persevering he would, too, and ruin, and ruin his new raincoat. You never know what freak, you know what know what freak they'd take alone with you. They're so savage for it. If anyone was passing, so I lifted them a bit and touched his trousers outside. The way I used to garden her after with my ring hand to keep him from doing worse where it was too public. I was dying to find out. He was shaking like a jelly all over. I want to do everything too quick. Take all the pleasure out of it. And Father waiting all the time for his dinner. He told me to say I left my purse in the bushes and had to go back for it. What a deceiver. Then he wrote me that letter with all those words in it. How could he have the face to any woman? After his company manners, making it so awkward after, when we met, asking me, have, have I offended you, with my eyelids down, of course he saw I wasn't. He had a few brains, not like that other fool, Henry Doyle. He was always breaking or tearing something in the charades. 
I hate him. I hate him. And, 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 and if I knew what it meant, of course, I had to say no for form's sake. Don't I understand you, I said. It wasn't it natural. So it is, of course. It used to be written up with a picture of a woman on that wall in Gibraltar with that word I couldn't find anywhere. Only for children seeing it too young and writing every morning a letter. Sometimes twice a day. I liked the way he made love then. He knew the way to take a woman. When he sent me the eight big poppies because mine was the eight. Then I wrote the night he kissed my heart at Dolphin's Barn. I couldn't describe, I couldn't describe, it, simply. describe it simply. It makes you feel like nothing on earth. But he never knew how to embrace well, like Gardner. I hope he'll come on Monday, as he said at the same time, four. I hate people who come at all hours, answer the door, you think it's the vegetables, vegetables, and it's somebody, and you all undressed, or the door of the filthy, sloppy kitchen blows open. The day-old frosty face Goodwin called about the concert in Lombard Street, and I just after dinner all flushed and tossed with boiling old stew. Don't look at me, Professor, I had to say, I'm a fright. I'm a fright. Yes, but he was a real, real old gentleman in his way. It was impossible to be more respectful. respectful. Nobody should say you're out. You have to peep you out through the blind, blind like a messenger boy. Like a messenger boy. Today, Today I thought it was a put-off put first. first. Him sending the port and peaches first. And I was just beginning to yawn with nerves thinking he was trying to make a fool of me. When I knew it was a tad rat at the door. He must have been a bit late because it was quarter after three when I saw the two Daedalus girls coming from school. I never know the time. Even that watch he gave me never seems to go properly. I'd want to get it looked after. When I threw the penny to that lame sailor for England, when I was whistling Home and Beauty, there is when I was whistling, there is a charming girl, and I hadn't even put on my clean shirt, powdered, powdered myself, or a thing. Then this day, week, to go to Belfast, just as well he has to go to Ennis, his father's anniversary, the 27th. It wouldn't be pleasant if he did. Suppose our rooms, our rooms at the hotel, hotel beside, beside each other, and any fooling went on in the new bed. I couldn't tell him to stop, I couldn't tell him to stop and not bother me with him in the next room, or perhaps some Protestant clergyman with a cough knocking on the wall, and he'd never believe the next day we didn't do something. So it's all very well, a husband, but you can't fool a lover. After me telling him we never did anything, of course he didn't believe me. Now it's better he's going where he is. The time going to the Mallow concert at Maryborough, ordering boiling soup for the two of us, then the bell rang out. He walks down the platform with the soup splashing about, taking spoonfuls of it. Hadn't he the nerve, and the waiter after him making a holy show of a screeching and confusion for the engine to start, but he wouldn't pay till he finished it. The two gentlemen in the third class carriage said he was quite right. So he was, so he too. Was too. He's so pig-headed sometimes when he gets a thing into his head. A good job. He was able to open the carriage door where it was night. They'd have taken us on a fork. I suppose that was done out of revenge on him. I suppose that was done out of revenge on him. Oh, I love jaunting in a train or a car with lovely soft cushions. I wonder, will you take the first class for me? He might want to do it in the train by tipping the guard well. No, oh, I suppose there'll be the usual idiots of men gaping at us with their eyes as stupid as ever they can possibly be. That was an exceptional man, that common workman that left us alone in the carriage that day going to house. We like to find out something about him. Tunnels, perhaps. Then you have to look out of the window. All the nicer than coming back. Suppose I never came back. What would they say? Eloped with him. That gets you on on the stage. The last concert I sang that was over a year ago. Over a year ago? When was it? St. Teresa's Hall, Clarendon Street. Little kids of Mrs. They have now seen Kathleen Carney and her like on account of father being in the army. And my singing the absent my big beggar and wearing a brooch for Lord Roberts when I had the map of it all. And polling not Irish. Was it him was managed it at this time? I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him. Like he got me on to sing in the Stab at Mater by going around saying he was putting lead kindly light to music. I put him up to that, till the Jesuits found out he was a Freemason, thumping the piano. Lead thou me on. Copy from some old opera. Yes. And he was going about with some of them, sinner fen lately, or whatever they call themselves. Talking his usual trash and nonsense. He says that little man you showed me about the neck is very intelligent. The coming man, Griffin. Is he well? He doesn't look at that's all I can say. Still, it must have been him. He knew there was a boycott. 
I hate the mention of their politics after the war that Pretoria and Ladysmith and Bloemfontein, where Gardner Lieutenant Stanley G. 8th Battalion, 2nd East Lancashire Regiment of Enteric Fever. He was a lovely fellow in khaki, just the right height. I'm sure he was brave. I'm sure he was brave, too. He said I was lovely the evening we kissed goodbye at the canal lock. My Irish beauty. He was pale with excitement about going away, or we'd be seen from the road. He couldn't stand properly, and I'm so hot as I never felt. They could have made their peace in the beginning, or old Oldham Paul and the rest of the other old crew go and fight it out between them. Instead of dragging on for years, killing any fine looking men there were with their fever. If he was, if he was even decently shot, it wouldn't have been so bad. I'd love to see a regiment pass in review. The first time I saw the Spanish cavalry at La Roque, it was lovely. After looking across the bay from Algeciras, all the lights of the rock like fireflies, or those sham battles on the 15 acres, the black, the black watch, watch with their kilts in time at the march past the 10th Hazars, the Prince of Wales owner, the Lancers. Oh, the Lancers, the Grand. Or the Dublin that won to His, his father, father made his money over selling the horses for the cavalry. Now he could buy me a nice present up in Belfast after what I gave him. They have lovely linen up there. Or one of those nice kimono things. I must, I must buy a mothball like I had before to keep in the drawer with them. It would be exciting going around with them shopping, buying those things in the new city. Better leave this ring behind. Want to keep turning and turning to get it over the knuckle there. Or they might bell it round the town in their papers or tell the police on me. But they'd think we're married. Oh, let them all go and smother themselves for the fat lot I care. He has plenty, plenty of money. money. He's not a married man. Somebody, somebody better get, somebody out better out get out of here. If I could find out whether he likes me, I could find out whether, find out whether he likes me. I looked a bit washy, of course. When I look close in the hand glass, powdering, a mirror never gives you the expression. Besides, scrooching down on me like that all the time with his big hip bones. He's heavy, too, with his hairy chest for this heat. Always having to lie down for them. Better for him to put it into me from behind. The way Mrs. Maschansky told me her husband husband made her, like the dogs do it, and stick out her tongue as far as ever she could. And he's so quiet and mild with his tingating scither. Can you ever be up to men? The way he takes them. Lovely stuff in that blue suit he had on. And stylish tie and socks with the sky blue silk things on them. He's certainly well off. I know by the cut his clothes have, and his heavy watch. But he was like a perfect devil for a few minutes after he came back to the stoppers. Tearing up all the tickets, swearing blazes because he lost 20 He said he lost over that outsider that won. And half he put on for me on account of Glenn Hans. Cursing him. Cursing him to the lowest Pits, that sponger. He was making free with me after the Glen Cree dinner, coming back. That long jolt over the feather bed mountain after. The Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor looking at me with his dirty eyes. Thou Dylan, the big heathen. I first noticed him at dessert when I was cracking the nuts with my teeth. I wished I could have picked every morsel of that chicken out of my fingers. It was so tasty and browned and as tender as anything. Only for I didn't want to eat everything on my plate. Those forks and fish slicers were hallmark silver, too. I wish I had some I could eat. I could easily have slipped a couple into my muff when I was playing with them, then always hanging out of them for money in a restaurant with a bit you put down your throat. We have to be thankful for our mangy cup of tea itself as a great compliment to be noticed in the way the world is divided. In any case, if it's going to go on, I want at least two other good chemises for one thing. And, but I don't know what kind of drawers he likes. Kind of drawers he likes. Not at all, I think. Didn't he say? Yes. yes. And half the girls in Gibraltar never wore them either. Naked as God made them. That Andalusian singing her Manola. She didn't make much secret of what she hadn't. Yes, and the second pair of silkette stockings is laddered after one day's wear. I could have brought them back to brought them back to the lures this morning and kicked up a row and made that one change them. Only not to upset myself and run the risk of walking into him and ruining the whole thing. And one of and those, those kid-fitting kid corsets, corsets I want. Advertised cheap and the gentleman. The elastic gores in the hips. He, he saved, saved the one I have, but that's no good. What did they say, what did they, say they give a delightful figure line? Eleven six obviating that unsightly broad appearance across the lower back to reduce flesh. My belly is a bit too big. I'll have to knock off the stout at dinner. 
Or am I getting too fond of it? The last they sent from O'Rourke's was as flat as a pancake. He makes his money easy. Larry, they call him. The old mangy parcel he sent at Christmas. A cottage cake and a bottle of hogwash he tried to palm off as claret. But he couldn't get anyone to drink. God spare his spit for fear he'd die of the drought. Or I must do a few breathing exercises. I wonder if is that anti-fat any good. Might overdo it. The thin ones are not so much the fashion. Now, garters, that much I have. The violet pair I wore today. That's all he bought me. Oh, no, there was the face lotion I finished the last of yesterday that made my skin like new. I told him over and over again, get that made up in the same place and don't forget it. God only knows whether he did after all I said to him. I'll know by the bottle anyway. If not, I suppose I'll only have to wash in my pits like beef tea or chicken soup with some of that apoponax and violet. I thought it was beginning to look coarse and hold a bit. The skin underneath is much finer where it peeled off there on my finger after the burn. It's a pity it isn't all like that. And the four paltry handkerchiefs, about six in all. Sure you can't get on in this world without style. All going in food and rent. When I get it, I'll lash it around. I tell you, in fine style. I always want to throw a handful of tea into the pot, measuring and mincing if I buy a pair of old brogues itself. Do you like those new shoes? Yes. How much were they? I have no clothes at all. The brown costume and the skirts and jacket and the one at the cleaners. Three. What's that for any woman? Cutting up this old hat and patching up the other. The men won't look at you, and the women try to walk on you because they know you've no man. Then with all the things getting dearer every day for the four years more I have of life up to 35. What am I at all? No, I'm... What am I at all? I'll be 33 in September. Will I? What? Oh, well. Look at that, Mrs. Look at that, Mrs. She's much older than me. I saw her when I was out last week. I was out when I was out last week. She was a lovely she woman. Was she was a lovely woman. Magnificent, magnificent head of hair on her, down to her waist, tossing it back like that, like Kitty O'Shea in Grantham Street. First thing I did every morning every morning to look across, see her combing it as if she loved it and was full of it. Pity I only got to know her the day before we left. And that Mrs. Langtree, the Jersey Lily the Prince of Wales was in love with. I suppose he's like the first man going roads, only for the name of a king. They're all, They're all made, made one way. way. Only, Only black man's head. Like to try. A beauty of what, what was she? What was she, five? There was some, some funny story, story about the jealous old husband. What was it at all? An, an oyster an knife? Oyster he went... He no, he made her wear a kind of tin thing round her. And the Prince of Wales. Yes, he had the oyster knife. Can't be true a thing like that. Can't be true a thing like that. Like some of those books he brings me. The works of Master Francois somebody, supposed to be a priest, about a child born out of her ear because her bum gut fell out. A nice word for any priest to write. And her A blank blank E, as if any fool would know what that meant. I hate that, that pretending of all things. With that old blackguard's face on it, anybody can see it's not true. And that, and that ruby, ruby in fair tires, tires he brought me that twice. I remember when I came to page 50, I heard about where she, about where she hangs him up out of a hook with a cord of flagellate. Sure, there's nothing for a woman in that, all invention. Made up about drinking the champagne out of her slipper after the ball was over. Like the infant Jesus in the crib, the inch in the cord, and the bloodless virgins are. Sure, no woman could have a child that big taken out of her. And I thought first it came out of her side because how could she go to the chamber when she wanted to go to the chamber when she wanted to? Of course she felt honored. His royal highness was in Gibraltar the year I was born. I bet he found a little there too where he planted the tree. He planted more than that in his time. More than that in his time. He might have planted me too if he'd come a bit sooner. Then I wouldn't be here as I am. He ought to chuck that Freeman with the paltry few shillings he knocks out of it and go into an office or something where he'd get regular pay. Or a bank where they could put him up on a throne to count the money all the day. Of course, he prefers plottering about the house. So you can't stir with him any side. What's your program today? I wish he'd even smoke a pipe like father to get the smell of a man. Or pretending, or pretending to, to be mooching about for advertisements when he could have been in Mr. Cuff still. Only for, what only for what he did then. Sending me to try and patch it up. I could have got him promoted there to be the manager. Gave me a great ride once or twice. 
first he was as stiff as the mischief, really and truly, Mrs. Bloom. Only I felt rotten simply with the old reddishy dress that I lost the leaves out of the tails with milk cutting. But they're coming into fashion. But they're coming into fashion. I bought it simply to please him. I knew it was no good by the finish. No good by the finish. Pity I changed my mind. Pity I changed my mind of going to sodden bums, as I said, and not leaves. It was just like the shop itself. Rummage sale. A lot of trash. I hate those rich shops. Get on your nerves. Nothing kills me altogether. Only he thinks he knows a great lot about women's dress and cooking. Mathering and everything he can off the shelves into it. If I went by, I went by his advice, by by his advice every, every blessed hat I put on, does that suit me? That yes, take that. that. That's all right. The one like a wedding cake standing up miles off my head? He said suited me. Or the dish cover one coming down on my backside, on pins and needles, about the shop girl in that place in Grafton Street I had the misfortune to bring him into. And she as insolent as ever she could be, with her smirk, saying, I'm afraid we're giving you too much trouble. What she's there for? But I stared it out of her. He was awfully stiff, and no wonder. But he changed the second time he looked. Pulled a pig-headed, as usual, like the soup. But I could see him looking very hard at my chest when he stood up to open the door for me. It was nice of him to show me out in any case. I'm extremely sorry, Mrs. Bloom, believe me. Without making it too marked the first time after him being insulted and me being supposed to be his wife. I know my chest was out that way. I know my chest was out that way at door when he said I'm extremely sorry and I'm sure you were. Yes, I think yes, he's yes, a bit firmer, firmer sucking on like that so long. That so he made me thirsty. Made me thirsty. It was a pretty easy call. It was a pretty easy call. I had to laugh. Yes, this yes, is yes, this this one I have. Sit in the middle of that silly thing. I'll get him to keep that up. And I'll take those eggs beaten up with Marcella. Fatten them out for him. What are all those veins and things? Curious, curious the way it's made. Two the same in the case of twins. They're supposed, supposed to represent beauty. Placed up there like those statues in the museum. What are they pretending to hide in their hand? Are they so beautiful? beautiful? Of course, of course compared with what a man looks like, with his two bags full and his other thing hanging down out of him, or sticking up at you like a hat rack. No wonder they hide it with a cabbage leaf. The disgusting Cameron Highlander behind the meat market, or that other wretch with the red head behind the tree with the fish statue of the fish used to be. When I was passing, when I was passing, pretending he was pissing and standing out for me to see it with his baby clothes up to one side. The Queen's own. They were, nice. they, were they were a nice lot. lot. It's, well it's well the Surrey's well relieve them. They're always, They're always trying, trying to show it to you. Every, every time, time, nearly. I passed, I passed outside, outside the men's greenhouse near the Hart Street, Street Station just, just to try some fellow or other trying to catch my eye, as if it was one of the seven wonders of the world. Oh, and the oh, stink of those rotten places. places. The, night the night coming home with Poldy after, after the Comerford's party. Oranges and lemonade to make you feel nice and watery. I went into one of them. It was so biting cold, I couldn't keep it. When was that? 93. The canal was frozen. Yes, it was a few months after. Yes, it was a few months after. A pity a couple of the cameras weren't there to see me squatting in the men's place in Darrow. I tried to draw a picture of it like a sausage or something. I wonder they're not afraid going about, of getting a kick or a bang or something there. The, the woman's woman beauty. beauty. Of course, of course that's admitted. admitted. When he said, when he when said I could pose for a picture and make it to some rich fellow in Fella Street. Street. When he when lost the job, lost the job in Helly. And I was selling the clothes and strumming in the, the, strumming the, the coffee palace. Would you like that bath? Would you like that bath? My hair down. My hair down. Yes, she's younger. Or my little bit like that dirty Spanish photo. Nymphs. 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 Nymph
What was the reason for that? A pound a week. He said I could have got a pound a week as a wet nurse. All swelled out the morning that delicate-looking student had stopped in number 28 with the Citron's Penrose nearly caught me washing through the window, only for I snapped up the towel to my face. That was his student hurt me. They used to weaning her. Till he got Dr. Brady to give me the Belladonna prescription. I had, I had to get him to suck them, they were so hard. Sweeter and thicker than cows. Then he wanted to milk me into the tea. Then he wanted, then he wanted to milk me into the tea. Well, he's beyond well, everything, everything, I declare. Somebody, somebody ought to put, somebody him, ought to put him in the budget. If only I, I could remember the one half, the one half, half of the things, half things half and write a book out of it, the works of Master Poldy. Yes, and it's so much smoother, the skin. Much an hour he was at them. I'm sure by the clock. Like some kind of a big infant I had at me. They want everything in their mouth. All, All the pleasure those, those men get out of a woman. woman. I can feel, I can feel, feel his mouth. mouth. Oh, oh Lord, I must stretch myself. I wish he was here, wish he was here or somebody to let myself go, go with. Come again like that. I feel all fire inside me. Dream it. Or if I could dream it. When he made me spend the second time, when he made me spend the second time tickling me behind, I was coming for about five minutes with my legs round him. My legs round him. I had to hug him. Hug him. Oh Lord, I wanted to shout him. All sorts of sorts of things. Fuck or shit or anything at all. Anything at all. Only not the most ugly. Those those lines from the strings. Who knows the way he'd take it? You want to fill your way with a man. They're not all like him. Thank God. Some of them. I want you to be so nice about it. I noticed the contrast. He does it and doesn't talk. He does it and doesn't talk. I gave my eyes I gave my eyes that hair a bit easier. Tumbling in my tongue and my tongue between my lips. Between my lips. Him, Up to him, the savage brute. Thursday, Friday, Friday, Friday Saturday, 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 Saturday. Oh Lord, I can't wait till Monday. Wait till Monday. Monday. Whistling with strength, those engines have in them, like big giants in the water rolling all over and out of them all sides, like the end of love's old sweet song. The poor men that have to be out all the night for their wives and families in those roasting engines. Stifling it was today. It was today. I'm glad I burned the half of those old Freemans and photo bits. Leaving things like that lying about, he's getting very careless. I threw the rest of them up in the WC. I'll get him to cut them tomorrow for me instead of having them for the next year. To get a few pens for them. Have him asking, where's last January's paper on all those old overcoats I bundled out of the hall? Making the place hotter than it is. The rain was lovely and refreshing just after my beauty sleep. I thought it was going to get like Gibraltar. My goodness, the heat there before the Levanter came on black this night. And the glare of the rock standing, the the rock the rock standing up in it. Compared with the big giant compared with their three rock mountain, they think it's so great. With the red sentries here and there, the poplars. And they all white hot and the smell of the rainwater in those tanks. Watching the sun all the time, weltering down on you. Faded all, that lovely frock father's friend Mrs. Stanhope sent me from the B. Marsh Paris. What a shame, my dearest Dalgarina, she wrote on it. She was very nice. What's this just her other name was? Like? Just a PC to tell you I sent the little present. I just had a jolly warm bath and built a very clean dog now. Enjoyed it. Wagger. She called him get anything. Would give anything to be back in Gibraltar. And here you seem waiting and in and Colony is the name of the last exercise new. He bought me one of those new something word I couldn't make out. Amusing things, but tear for the least things. Still, they're lovely, I think, don't you? We'll always think of the lovely teas we had together. Scrumptious curry scones and raspberry wafers I adore. Well now, dearest Dogarina, be sure and write soon. Kind she left out. Regards to your father, also Captain Grove. With love, yours affectionately, Hester. XX, she didn't look a bit married. Just, just like a girl. Like he, was girl. he was years older than her walker. He was awfully older. fond of me. Awful. When he held down the wire with his foot for me to step over at the bullfight at La Lena, when that Matador Gomez was given the bull's ear. These clothes we have to wear, whoever invented them, expecting you to walk up Killiney Hill. Then, for example, at the picnic, all stays up. You can't do a blessed thing in them in a crowd. Run or jump out of the way. 
That's why I was afraid when that other ferocious old bull began to charge the Benderieros with the sashes and the two things in their hats. And the brutes of men shouting, Bravo Toro! Sure, the women were as bad in the nice white men's he is, ripping all the whole insides out of those poor horses. I never heard of such a thing in all my life. Yes, he used to break his heart at me. Yes, he used to break his heart at me, taking off the dog barking and that lame poor brute, and it's sick. What became of them ever? I suppose they're dead long ago, the two of them. It's like all through a mist. It makes you feel so old. So old. I made the scones, of course. I had everything all to myself then. A girl, Hester, we used to compare our hair. Compare our hair. Mine was thicker than, Mine was thicker than hers. She showed me how to settle it at the back when I put it up and what's this else. How to make a knot on a thread with the one hand. We were like cousins. What age was I then? The night of the storm, I slept in her bed and she had her arms around me. Then we were fighting in the morning with the pillow. What fun. He was watching now whenever he got an opportunity. At the band of the Alameda Esplanade when I was with Father and Captain Grove, I looked up at the church first, and then at the windows, then down, and our eyes met. I felt something go through me like all something go through me like all needles. My eyes were dancing. I remember after, when I looked at myself in the glass, hardly recognized myself. The change. He was attracted to a girl, in spite of his being a little bald, intelligent, intelligent looking, disappointed and gay at the same time. He was like Thomas in the shadow of Eschlidia. He had a splendid skin from the sun and the excitement like a rose. I didn't get a wink of sleep. It would have been nice on account of her. But I could have stopped it in time. She gave me the moonstone to read. That was the first I read of Wilkie Collins. East Lynn. I read the shadow of Eschlidia. Henry Wood. Henry Dunbar by that other woman I lent him afterwards with Mulvey's photo in it. So as you see, I wasn't without. And Lord Lytton, Eugene Aram, Molly Bomb she gave me by Mrs. Hungerford on account of the name. I don't like books with a Molly in them. Like that one he brought me about the one from Flanders. A whore. Always shoplifting anything she could. Cloth and stuff and yards of it. Oh, this blanket is too heavy on me. That's better. I have even one decent nightdress. This thing gets all rolled, rolled under me, besides, besides him and his fooling. Well, that's better. That's better. I, I, used I used to be weltering then in the heat. A shift drenched with the sweat stuck in the cheeks of my bottom on the chair. When I stood up, they were so fattish and firm. When I got up on the sofa cushions to see with my clothes up, and the bugs, and the tons of them, tons of them at night, and the mosquito nets, I couldn't read a line. Lord, how long ago it seems? Centuries. Of course, they never came back, and she didn't put her address right on it either. She may have noticed her walker. People were always going away, and we never... I remember that day with the waves and the boats with their high heads rocking and their smell of ships. Those officers' uniforms, Those officers uniforms on shore leave made me seasick. He didn't say anything. He was very serious. I had the high-button boots on, and my skirt was blowing. She kissed me six or seven times. Didn't I cry? I believe I, I, believe I did or near it. My lips were catering when I said goodbye. She had a gorgeous wrap of some special kind of blue color on her for the voyage, on her made very peculiarly to one side like and it was extremely pretty. It got as dull as the devil after they went. I was almost planning to run away in that, out of it somewhere, whenever it is. Father or aunt or marriage, marriage. Waiting, always waiting. Guide him to me. Nor waiting, nor speed his flying feet. The damn guns bursting and booming all over the shop, especially the Queen's birth and throwing everything down in all directions if you didn't open the windows when General Ulysses Grant, whoever he was or did, supposed to be some great fellow, landed off the ship. An old Sprague, the consul, that was there from before the flood dressed up. Poor man. Poor man, and, and he, he in mourning for the sun. Then the same then the same old, old, same old bugles from reveille in the morning, and drums rolling, and the, and the unfortunate poor devils of soldiers walking about with mist and smelling the place more than the old long-bearded Jews in their jellies, and Levites assembly, and sound clear and gunfire for the men to cross the lines, and the warden marching with his keys to lock the gates, to lock the bagpipes, and only Captain Groves and Father talking about Rourke's drift, and Plevna. 
Edna and Sir Garnet Wolseley and Gordon at Khartoum, lighting their pipes for them every time they went out. Drunken old devil with his grog in the windowsill. Catch him leaving any of it. Picking his nose trying to think of some other dirty story to tell up in the corner. But he never forgot himself when I was there. Sending, sending me out of the room on some blind excuse, excuse paying his compliments. compliments. The bush knows whiskey, whiskey talking, of course. course. But he'd do the same to the next the woman that came along. I suppose, I suppose he died, he died of galloping, of galloping drink, drink, ages drink ages ago. The days, the days like years. A, a letter from a living soul. Except the, except the, except the odd few I posted to myself with bits of paper in So bored sometimes I could fight with my nails. Listening to that old Arab with one eye, this hey and one eye. Hey 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 even in, in, in the opposite house, at Medical in Hollis Street, the nurse was after. When I put on my gloves and hat at the window to show I was going out, not a notion what I meant. Aren't they thick? Never understand what you say. Even you'd want to print it up on a big poster for me. Not even if you shake hands twice with the left. He didn't recognize me either, and I half frowned at him outside Westlin Row Chapel. Where does their great intelligence come in? Come in, I'd like to know. Gray matter. They have it all in their tail, if you ask me. Those country gougers up in the city arms. Intelligence. They had a damn sight less than the bulls and cows they were selling the meat. And then the Coleman's bell, that noisy bugger trying to swindle me with the wrong bill he took out of his hat. What a pair of paws and paws and pots and pans and kettles to mend. Any broken bottles for a poor man today. And no visitors or post ever. Except his checks or some adverts or some adverts. Like that wonder like that sentiment dress. Wonder like that wonder word dress and head dress. Dear madam, only his letter and the card from Millie this morning. See, she wrote a letter to him. Who did I get the last letter from? Oh, Mrs. Dwen. Now what possessed her to write from Canada after so many years? To know the recipe, to know the recipe I had for Pisto Madrilene. Flowey Dillon, so she wrote to say she was married to a very rich architect. If I'm to believe, all I hear with an eight rooms. Her father was an awfully nice man. He was near 70. Always good humor. Well now, Miss well, now, Tweedy, Tweedy Miss Gillespie, Miss Gillespie there's, there's the piano. The piano. That was a solid that was silver, silver coffee, coffee service he had, too, on the mahogany sideboard. And dying, dying so far away. away. I hate people, I hate people that have always their poor story to tell. Everybody has their own troubles. That poor Nancy Blake died a month ago of acute pneumonia. Well, I didn't know her so well as all that. She was Chloe's friend more than mine. Poor Nancy. It's a bother having to answer. He always tells me the wrong things, and no stops to say like making a speech. Your sad bereavement, sympathy. I always make that mistake. And you few, with two W's in. I hope he'll write me a longer letter the next time. It's a thing he really likes me. He really likes me. Oh, thanks be to the great God I got somebody to give me what I badly want. Put some heart up into me. You've no chances at all in this place like you used long ago. I wish somebody would I wish somebody would love the love letter. His wasn't much. And I told him he can write what he liked. And I told him he could write what he liked. Yours, Yours ever, ever Hugh Boylan in old Madrid. Stuff silly women believe love is. Sign, I am dying. Still, still, if he wrote it, I suppose there'd be some truth in it. True or no, it fills up your whole day in life. Always something to think about every minute, every moment. See it all, it all around you like a world. world. I could, write I could write the answer in bed to let him imagine me. Short. Short. Just a few Just words. A few words. Not, those not those long, long cross letters Addie Dillon, Dillon used to write to the fellow that was something in the four courts that jilted her after, out of the lady's, out of the lady's letter, letter writer, when I told her to say a few simple words he could twist. How he liked not acting with precipitancy, with equal candor, with the greatest earthly happiness. Answer to a gentleman's proposal and firmly. My goodness, there's nothing else. It's all very fine for them. But as for people, they might as well throw you out in the bottom of the ash pit. Mulvey's was the first when I was in bed that morning and Mrs. Rubio brought it in with the coffee. She stood there standing when I asked her to hand me a night pointing at them. 
I couldn't think of the word. A hairpin to open it with. Ah, Horkia! Disobliging old thing. And it's staring her in the face, with her switch of false hair on her and vein about her appearance, ugly as she was. Near eighty or a hundred, her face her face and wrinkles. With all her religion domineering because she never could get over the Atlantic fleet coming in. Half the ships of the world and the Union Jack flying with all her carabineros because four drunken English sailors took all the rock from them. And because I didn't run into Nass often enough, I sent her Maria to please her with her shawl up on her. Except when there was a marriage on. Felt her miracles of the saints and her black blessed virgin with a silver dress and the sun dancing three times on Easter Sunday morning when the priest was going by with the bell bringing the Vatican to the dying. Blessed herself for his majesty. And admiring the sign, I near jumped out of my skin. I wanted to pick him up when I saw him following me along the Calle Real in the shop window. Then he tipped me just in passing. But I never thought he'd write making an appointment. I had it inside my petticoat bodice all day, reading it up in every hole and corner while my father was up at the drill instructing to find out by the handwriting of the language of stamps. Singing, I remember my words. And I wanted to put on the old stupid clock to near the time. He was the first man kissed me under the Moorish wall, my sweetheart of the Moorish it never entered my head what kissing meant till he put his tongue in my mouth. never entered my head what kissing meant till he put his tongue in my mouth. His mouth was sweet like young. His mouth was sweet like young. I put my knee up to him a few times to learn the way. What did I tell him I was engaged for? For fun? To the son of a Spanish nobleman named Don Miguel de la Flor. And he believed me that I was to be married to him in three years' time. There's many a true word spoken in jest. There is a flower that bloometh. There is a flower that bloometh. A few things I told him true about myself, just for him to be imagining the Spanish girls he didn't like. I suppose one of them would not have him. I got him excited. He crushed all the flowers on my bosom he brought me. He couldn't count the pesetas and the paravordas till I taught him. Capricorn, Capricorn came from, he said, on the black water, but it was, I was too short. Then the, day then the day before he left, left. May. Yes, it was May. Yes, yes it was May. May. When the infant king of Spain was born. I'm always like that in the spring. I'd like a new, I'd like a new, fellow, new fellow, fellow every year. Every year. Up, on Up on the tip top, top under the rock gun near, near O'Hara's, O'Hara's Tower. tower. I told him it was struck by lightning, and all about the old Barbary of St. Stenson and Clapham, without a tail careering all over the show when he cut it back. Mrs. Rubio said she was a regular old rock scorpion, robbing the chickens out of the Insis farm, and throw stones at you if you went anear. End of section 18a Ulysses by James Joyce, section 18b. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. He was, he was looking at me. At me. I, had that white I had that white blouse on, open in the front to open encourage him as much as I could without too, too open legs. Like, too too open. Too they were just beginning to be plump. I said I was tired. We lay over the fir tree, wild place. I suppose it must be the highest rock in existence. The galleries and casements of those frightful rocks in St. Michael's Cave, with the icicles or whatever they call them hanging down, down, and ladders, ladders. All the mud mud punch my boots. I'm sure that's the way down. The monkeys go under the sea to Africa when they die. The ship's out far like chips. That was the Malta boat passing. Yes, the sea and the sky. You could do what you like. Lie there forever. Forever. He caressed them outside. They love doing that. It's the, round it's the roundness there. I was leaning over him with my white rice straw hat to take the newness out of it. The left side of my face is the best. My blouse open for his last day. Transparent, kind of shirt he had. 
I, I could see, see his chest. chest pink. He wanted, he wanted to touch mine. He wanted to touch mine, but I wouldn't let him. He was awfully put out first for fear you never know consumption and leave me to the child in Barajada. That old servant, that old servant Inez, told me that one drop, even if got into you at all, after I tried the banana, but I was afraid it might break and get lost up in the sun somewhere. Because they once took something down out of a woman that was up there for years covered with lime salt. They're all mad to get in there where they come out of. You'd think they could never go far enough up. And then they're done with you in a way. So the next time. Yes, because there's a wonderful feeling. They're so tender all the time. How did we finish it off? Yes. Oh, yes. I pulled him off into my handkerchief. I pulled him off into my handkerchief, pretending not to be excited, but I opened my legs. I wouldn't let him touch me inside my petticoat because I had a skirt opening up the side. I life out of him. First tormented the life out of him. First I love tickling rousing him. that dog in the hotel. I love oh, rousing that dog in the hotel. His eyes shut and a bird flying below us. He was shy all the same. I liked him like that, moaning. I made him blush a little when I got over him that way. When I unbuttoned him and took his out and drew back the skin, it had a kind of eye in it. They're all buttons, men, down the middle, on the wrong side of them. Molly, darling, he called me. Was it Jack, Joe, Harry, Molly, was it? Yes, I think. A lieutenant. A lieutenant. He was rather fair. He had a laughing kind of voice, so I went round to the... What do, you, what, do you call call it? what do you call it? Was, what everything was. What do you call it? He said he'd come back. Mustache. He said he'd come back. Lord, it's just, just like back. yesterday to me. Well, and if I was married, he'd, he'd do it to me. And I promised him, yes, faithfully, I'd let him block me. Now flying. Perhaps he's dead, or killed, or a captain, or admiral. It's nearly 20 years. If I said fur tree coat, he would. If he came up behind me and put his hands over my eyes to guess who, I might recognize him. He's young still, about 40. Perhaps he's married some girl in the black water and is quite changed. They all do. They, all do. they, haven't, half they haven't half the character a woman has. She well knows what I did with her beloved husband before he ever dreamt of her. In broad daylight, too. In the sight of the whole world, you might say. They could have put an article about it in the Chronicle. I was a bit wild. I was a bit wild when I blew up the old bag with the skits for the name. Lord, all the wood pigeons and all the wood pigeons coming back, coming back the same way back to went over Middle Hill round by the old guard house and the Jews burial place, pretending to read out the Hebrew on them. I wanted to fire his pistol. He said he had one. He didn't know what to make of me, with his peak cap on that he always wore crooked as often as I settled it straight. HMS Calypso, swinging my hat. That old bishop that spoke off the altar, his long preach about women's higher functions, about girls now riding the bicycles, God sent him sense and me God sent him sense and me more money. I suppose they're called after him. I never, I never thought, thought that would be my name, Bloom. Bloom. When I used to write in print to see how it looked on a visiting card, or practicing for the butcher and oblige. M. Bloom. Bloom. You're, looking blooming. You're looking blooming, Joseph used to say after I married him. Well, it's better than Bring or Briggs does Briggs. Or those awful names with bottom in them. Mrs. Ramsbottom, or some other kind of bottom. Mulvey. I wouldn't go mad about either. Or suppose I divorced him. Mrs. Boylan. My mother, whoever she was, might have given me a nicer name. The Lord knows. After the lovely one she she had Lunita Laredo. The fun we had running along the Willis Road, to like twisting in and out all around the other side of the road. They were shaking and dancing about in my blouse, like Millie's little ones now when she runs up the stairs. I loved looking down at them. I was jumping up at the pepper trees and the white poplars, pulling the leaves off and throwing them at him. He went to India. He was to write. The voyages those men have to make to the ends of the world and back. It's the least they might get a squeeze or two at a woman while they can, going out to be drowned or blown up somewhere. I went up Windmill Hill to the flats that Sunday morning with Catherine Rubios. That was dead spyglass that the sent from had. He said he'd have one or two from on board. I wore that frock in the B. Marquette Paris and the coral necklace, the straits shining. I could see over to Morocco almost the day of the Tangier. Why? 
white, and the atlas mountain with snow on it, and the straits like a river so clear. Harry, Mahler, darling. I was thinking of him on the sea all the time after at mass when my petticoat began to slip down at the elevation. Weeks and weeks I kept the handkerchief under my pillow for the smell of him. There was no decent perfume to be got in that Gibraltar, only that cheap peau de Spagna that faded and left a stink on you more than anything else. I wanted to give him a memento. He gave me that clumsy clatterbang for luck that I gave Gardner going to South Africa where those boars killed him with their war and their fever. But they were well beaten all the same, as if it brought its bad luck with it, like an opal or pearl. Still, it must have been pure 18 karat gold because it's very heavy. But what could you get in a place like that? The sand frog shower from Africa and that derelict ship that came up to the harbor. Marie. The Marie, what do you call it? No, he had a mustache that was starting to Yes, I can see his face clean shaven. Freeze! That train again weeping tone. Once in the dear dead days beyond recall. Close my eyes, breathe, my lips forward, kiss, sad look, eyes open, piano, air o'er the world the mist began. Or the world I the hate that began. it's big. Oh, I hate that Comes it's big. Love Comes love's sweet song. I'll let that out full when I get in front of the footlights again. Kathleen Carney and her love of squealers. Miss this, miss that, miss the other. A lot of sparrow farts getting around talking about politics. Talking about politics. They know as much about it as my backside. Anything in the world to make themselves some way interesting. Irish, homemade beauties. Soldier's daughter, am I, I. And whose are you? Bootmakers and publicans. I beg your pardon, coach. I thought you were a wheelbarrow. They die down dead, dead off their feet, feet if ever they got a chance of walking down the Alameda on an officer's arm like me on the band night. My eyes flash. My bust that they haven't passed. God help their poor head. I knew more about men and life when I was 15 than they'll all know at 50. They don't know how to sing a song like that. Gardner said no man could look at my mouth and teeth smiling like that and not think of it. I was afraid he mightn't like my accent first. He's so English. He's so English. All, father left, All father left me in spite of his stance. I have my mother's eyes, and, my figure mother's eyes and figure anyhow. He always said they're so he snotty about themselves, some of those cads. He wasn't a bit like that. He was dead gone on my lips. Let them get a husband first that's fit to be looked at and a daughter like mine. Or see if they can excite a swell with money that can pick and choose whoever he wants like Boylan. To do it four or five times locked in each other's arms. To do it four or five times locked in each other's arms. Or the voice either. I could have been a prima donna. Only I married him. Comes love, old deep down. Chin back, not too much. Make it double. My lady's bower is too long for an encore. About the moated grange at twilight in vaunted rooms. Yes, I'll sing the winds that blow from the south that he gave after the choir scare's performance. I'll change that lace on my black dress. Yes, by God, I'll get that big band mended, make them burst with envy. My whole is the always when I think of him. I feel I want to. I feel some wind in me. Better go easy, not wake him. Back him at it again, slobbering. After washing every bit of myself, back belly and sides. Belly and sides. If we even had a bath itself, or my own room, anyway. If we even had a bath itself. He'd sleep in some bed by himself. His cold feet on me. Give us room even to let a fart. God, or do the least thing better. Yes, hold them like that a bit on my side. Piano quietly. There's that train far away, seeing us in the One more song. That was a relief. Wherever you be, let your wind go free. Who knows if that pork chop I took with my cup of tea after was quite good. With the heat, I couldn't smell anything off it. I'm sure that queer-looking man in the pork butchers is a great rogue. I hope that lamp is not smoking. Fill my nose up with smuts. Better than having him leaving the gas on all night. I couldn't, I couldn't rest easy in my bed in Gibraltar, even getting up to sea. Why am I so damn nervous about that, though? I like it in the winter. It's more company. 
Oh, Lord, it was rotten cold, too, that winter when I was only about ten. Was I? Yes, I had the big doll with all the funny clothes, dressing her up and undressing, that icy wind speeding across from those mountains to something Nevada. Sierra Nevada. Standing at the fire with a little bit of a short shift I had up to heat myself. I love dancing. I love dancing. Then make a race back. I'm sure that fellow opposite used to be there the whole time watching the lights out in the summer. And I in my skin hopping around. I used to love myself then. Stripped at the wash stand. Dabbing and creaming only when it came to the chamber performance. I put out the light too. So then there were two of us. Then there were two of us. Goodbye to my sleep for this night and hour. I hope he's not going to get into one of those medicals leading him astray to imagine he's young again. Coming in at four in the morning. Must be. Must be, if not more. Still, he had the manners not to wake him. What do they find to jabber about all night? Squandering money and getting drunker and drunker. Couldn't they drink water? And he starts giving us his order for eggs and eggs and tea and patty and patty and hot buttered toast. I suppose we'll have him sitting up like the king of the country, pumping the wrong end of the spoon up and down. Wherever he learned that from, I loved and I loved to hear him falling up the stairs of a morning with the cups rattling on the tray, and then play with the cat. She rubs up against you for her own sake. She's as bad as a woman always licking. She's as bad as a woman always licking and licking. But I hate their claws. I hate their claws. I wonder, do they see anything that we can't? Staring like that when she sits at the top of the stairs so long and listening as I wait always. What a robber too. A lovely fresh place. I bought. I think I'll, I think I'll get a bit of fish tomorrow. Or today. Or today. Is, it Friday? Is it Friday? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. With some Lamage with black, black currant jam. Black like currant jam. Like long ago. Not, Not those two pound pots, pots of mixed plum, plum and apple from the, the London and Newcastle. Williams and Woods goes twice as far only for the bones. I hate the mules. Cod. Yes, I'll get a nice piece of cod. I'm always getting enough to be forgetting. Anyway, I'm sick of that everlasting butcher's meat from the Loin loin chops chops and leg and ribs steak, rib steak and scrag of the mutton and, and calf's block. The very name, name is enough. Or a picnic. Suppose, or a picnic. We, all Suppose we all eat five and each and, and, and invite Or let him pay it and invite some other woman for him. Who? Mrs. And drove out Fleming. to Mrs. Fleming. And drove out to the strawberry bed. We'd have him examining all the horse's toenails first, like he does with the letters. No, like not he does with the letters. There. Yes, with some cool veal and ham mixed sandwiches. There are little houses down at the There are little houses down at the bottom of the banks there on purpose. But it's as hot as blazes. Not a bank holiday, anyhow. I hate those ruck of Marianne Cole boxes out for the day. But Monday is a cursed day, too. No wonder that wonder that bee bit him. Better the seaside. But I'd never again in this life get into a boat with him. After him at Bray telling the boatman he knew how to row, if anyone asked could he ride the steeplechase with a gold cup, he'd say yes. Then it came on to get rough, the old thing crookeding about my weight all down my side. Telling me, pull the right reins, now pull the left. And the tide all swamping in floods and through the bottom. And his oar slipping out, slipping out of the It's a mercy he can swim around. He can swim, of course. No. No danger whatsoever. Keep yourself calm. Keep yourself calm. I'd like to have tattered them down off him before all the people. And give him what that one calls flagellate till he's black and blue. Do him all the good in the world. Only for that long nosed chap. I don't know who he is. That other beauty, Burke, out of the City Arms Hotel, was there, spying around as usual on the slip, always where he wasn't wanted. If there was a row on, you would vomit a better face. There was no love lost between us. That's one consolation. I wonder what kind is that book that brought me. Sweets of Sin by a Gentleman of Fashion. Fashion. Some other Mr. I suppose the people, I suppose the people gave him that nickname going about with his tube from one woman to another. I couldn't even change my new white shoes, all ruined with the salt water. And the hat I had with that feather, a blowy and tossed, tossed on me. How annoying and provoking. Because the smell of the sea excited me, of course. The sardines and the green. They were fine, all silver in the fisherman's basket. Old Luigi, near a hundred, they said, came from Genoa. And the tall old chap with the earrings, I don't like a man you have to climb up to get at. I suppose they're all dead and rotten long ago. 
Besides, Besides I, don't I don't like being alone, like being alone in these big barracks of a place at night. I suppose, I suppose I'll have to put up with it. I never brought, I never a, bit brought a bit of salt in, even, even when we moved in the confusion. Musical Academy he was going to make on the first floor drawing room with the brass plate, or Bloom's private hotel, he suggested. Go and ruin himself altogether the way his father down down in Ennis. Like all the things he told father he was going to do, and me. I saw telling through him, me the telling me all the lovely places, places we could go for the honeymoon, moonlight with the gondolas, moonlight with the gondolas, moonlight with the gondolas and the lake of Como. He had, a picture, he had a picture cut out of some paper and, and mandolins and lanterns. Oh, how nice, nice I said. Whatever I liked, he was going to, do, like I liked, he was going to do immediately, if not man. sooner. Will you, carry my can? My will you be my man? Will you carry my can? He ought to get a leather medal with a putty rim for all the plans he invents, then leaving us here all day. You'd never know what would be beggar at the door for a crust with his long story might be a tramp and put his like foot in the way to prevent me shutting it off. Like that picture of that hardened criminal who was called Lloyd 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 One year in jail, then he comes out and murders an old woman for her money. Imagine his poor wife or mother, whoever she is. Such a face you'd such a face you'd run miles away from. I couldn't rest easy until I bolted all the doors and windows to make sure. But it's worse again being locked up like in a prison or a madhouse. They ought to all be shot with a cat of nine tails. A big brute like that would attack a poor old woman and murder her in her bed. I'd cut them off him so I would. I'd cut them off him so I would. Still better than Now that he'd be much use. Still better than nothing in the night. I was sure I was sure I heard burglars in the kitchen. And he went down in his shirt with a candle and a poker as if he was looking for a mouse. As white as a sheet, frightened out of his wits, making as much noise as he possibly could for the burglar's benefit. There isn't much to steal. Deal, indeed, the Lord knows. Still, it's the feeling, especially now with Millie away. Such an idea for him to send the girl down the roller to take photographs on account of his grandfather. Instead of sending her to Scary's Academy, where she'd have to learn. Not like me getting all one in school. Only he'd do a thing like that all the same on account of me and Boy Lynn. That's why he did it, I'm certain. The way he plots and plans everything out. I couldn't turn around when her in the place lately unless I bolted the door first. Give me the fidget. It's coming in without knocking first. When I put the chair against the door, just as I was washing myself there below the glove, get on your nerves, then doing the love lady all day, put her in a glass case with two at a time to look at her. If he knew she broke off a hand off that little Jim Crack statue with her roughness and carelessness before she left, but I got that little Italian boy to men that you can't see the joint. Two shillings. Wouldn't even team with potatoes for you. Of course, she's right not to on her hands. I noticed, I noticed he was always talking to her lately at the table, explaining, explaining things, things in the paper and she, she pretending to understand. understand. Sly, of course. That comes from this side of the house. He can't say I pretend things, can he? I'm too honest as a matter of fact in helping her into her coat. But if there was but anything wrong with her, it's, it's, me. Me. it's me, she'd tell not, not him. I suppose, I suppose he thinks I'm finished out and laid on the shelf. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm no, not. Nor no, like nor it. anything Sorry. like it. We'll see. She's we'll on. see now. She's well on for flirting, too, with Tom Devon's two sons, imitating me whistling, whistling with, those with those romps of Murray girls, girls calling for her. Can Millie come out, Millie come out please? please? She's, She's in great demand. demand. They can to out of her round in Nelson Street, riding Harry Devon's bicycle at night. It's as well he sent her where she is. She was just getting out of bounds, wanting to go on the skating rink and smoking their cigarettes through their nose. I smelt it off her dress when I was biting off the thread of the bus. Button I sewed onto the bottom of her jacket. She couldn't hide she couldn't much hide from much me, I tell you. Only I ought to have stitched it. And, and it, it on her, it brings a part of the body. And the last time I'm putting two, putting two hats. No it comes, it comes out, out no matter what they say. Her tongue is a bit too long for my taste. Your blouse is open too low, she says to me. The pan calling the kettle black bottom. And I had to tell her not to cock her legs up like that on show on the windowsill before all the people passing. They all, they all look, look at her, her like me when I was her age. Of course, of course any old way looks well on you, man. A great, a great touch-me-not, too, in her own way. 
that the only way in the theater royale. Take your foot away out of that. Keep people touching me. Afraid of her life, I'd crush her skirt with the pleats. A lot of that touching must go on in theaters. In the crush, in the dark, trying to dark. Always trying. That fellow in the pit at the gaiety for the beer bone chain. That fellow in the pit at the gaiety for beer bone trilby. To be squashed like that. Last time I ever go there. To be squashed like that for any trilby or her bear bum every two minutes tipping me there and looking away. He's a bit, He's a bit daft. I think I, I think saw I him after, after trying, trying to get, to get near two, two stylish, stylish dressed ladies outside Switzer's window. At the, at the same, same little game. game. I, I, I recognized him on the moment, the face and everything. But he didn't but remember, he didn't remember me. me. Yes, and she didn't even want me to kiss her at the broadstone going away. Well, I hope well, she'll get someone to I dance. I hope she'll get someone to dance. Attendance on her the way I did. She was down with the mumps and her glands swollen. Of course she can't feel anything deep yet. Of course she can't feel anything deep yet. I never came properly till I was, what, 22 or so? I went into the wrong place always. Only the usual, Only the usual, girl's, nonsense Only the usual girl's nonsense and giggling. That Connie Connolly writing to her in white ink on black paper sealed with sealing wax. So she clapped when the curtain came down because he looked so handsome. Then we had Martin breakfast dinner and supper. I thought to myself afterwards, it must be real love if a man gives up his life for her that way for nothing. I suppose there are I suppose there are a few men like that left. It's hard, hard to believe, believe in it, though, unless it really happened to me. To me. The, the majority, majority of them with not a particle of love in their natures. To find two, to find two people like that nowadays, nowadays full up of each other, that would feel the same way as you do. Usually a bit foolish. They're usually a bit foolish in the head. His father must have been a bit queer to go and poison himself after her. Still, still poor old man. man. I suppose he felt lost. She's always She's making always love to my things. Two old rags I have. Wanting to put her hair up at 15, my powder too. Only ruin her skin enough. She's time enough for that. She's time enough for that. All her life after. Of course she's restless and pretty. Her lips are red. A pity they won't stay that way. I was too, but there's no use going to the fair with anything. Answering me like a fishwoman when I asked to go for a half a stone of potatoes. The day we met Mrs. Joe Gallagher at the trotting altar, and she pretended not to see us in her trap of friary, the solicitor. We weren't grand enough we until I gave her two damn fine, fine cracks across the ear for Take that now for answering, that now for answering that me that like that. Your and that, and that, for your, and for your impudence. She had me that exasperated. Of course, of course, contradicting. I was, I was bad tempered too, because how was it there was a weed in the tea? There was a weed in the tea, or I didn't sleep the night before. Cheese I ate, was it? And I told her over and over again not to leave knives crossed like Because she has nobody to her man said herself. Well, if he doesn't come. Correct. Yes, I will. will. That was the last time. That was the last time she turned on the tear tap. I was just like that. I was just I was like just that myself. myself. They daren't they order, order me about, me about the place. place. It's his fault. It's his fault, of course, having, having the two of us slaving instead of getting, instead of getting in a woman ago. long ago. Am I ever going to have a proper, proper, proper servant again? Of course. Of course. Of course. Then, then she'd see him coming. I'd have to let, I'd have her, know to let her know or she'd revenge it. I'd see a nuisance, that old Mrs. Fleming. You have to be walking around after her, putting the things into her hand, sneezing and farting into the pots. Well, of course, well, of course she's, she's old. She can't help it. A good job. A good job. I found that rotten old smelly dishcloth that got lost behind the dresser. I knew there was something. And opened the area window to let out the smell, bringing in his friends to entertain them. Like the night he walked home with a dog. If you please, that might have been mad. Especially Simon Fatal's son. His father, such a criticizer, with his glasses up, with his tall hat on him. At the cricket match, and a great big hole in his side. One thing laughing. At the the other. Other. And his and son his that son got, got all those prizes for whatever, whatever he won them in the intermediate. Imagine, imagine climbing, climbing over, over the railings. Anybody if anybody saw, saw him that knew us, I wonder if he didn't tear a big hole in his grand, grand funeral, funeral trousers. trousers. As if, As if the one nature, nature gave wasn't, wasn't enough for anybody. Hawking, Hawking him down, down into the dirty old kitchen. kitchen. Now, right now. Right head, right I right right head. Pity it wasn't washing day. My old pair of drawers might have been hanging up two on the line on exhibition for all he'd ever cared. With the iron mold mark, with the iron mold burned on them, he might think burned on them, he might think was something else. And she never even rendered down the fat, I told her. And now she's going such.
such as she was on account of her paralyzed husband getting worse. There's always something wrong with them. There's always something wrong with them. Disease, or they have to go under an operation. Or if it's not that, it's during And he beats her. I'll have to around again for someone. Every day I get up, there's some new thing. Please, God. Well, when I'm stretched out stretch dead in my grave, my grave I, suppose I suppose I'll have some peace. I want to get up a minute if I'm let. Wait. Oh, Jesus, wait. Yes, that thing has come on Yes, that thing has come on me. Yes, now wouldn't that afflict you? Of course, all, of course, all the poking and rooting and plowing he had up in me. Now, what now am I to do? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that pester, pester the soul out of a body? Unless he likes it. Some men do, God knows. There's always something wrong with us. Five days every three or four weeks. Usually one month reaction. Isn't it simply sick? Isn't it sick? That night it came on me. That night it came on me like that. The one and only time we were in a box that Michael Gunn gave him to see Mrs. Kendall and her husband at the gaiety. Something he did about insurance for him and Drimmies. I was fit to be tied, though. I wouldn't give in. With that gentleman of fashion staring down at me with his glasses. And him. The other, the other side, side of me, talking, talking about Spinoza and his soul that's dead, I suppose, millions of years, years ago. I smiled the best I could, all in a swamp, leaning forward as if I was interested, having to sit it out then to the last tag. I won't forget that wife of Scarly in a hurry. Supposed, supposed to be a fast play about adultery. That idiot in the gallery hissing. The woman of adultery, he shouted. I suppose he went and had a woman in the next lane running round all the back ways after to make up for it. I wish he had what I had. Then he boom. I bet the cat itself is better off than us. Have we too much blood up in us, or what? Oh, patience above, it's pouring out of me like the sea. Anyhow, he didn't he didn't make pregnant as big as he is. I don't want to ruin the clean sheet we just saw. I suppose the clean linen and I wore brought it on, brought it on, on too. too. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. And they always want, they always want, want to see a stain on the bed to know you're a virgin for them. All that's troubling them. They're such fools, too. You could be a widow or divorced 40 times over. A daub of red ink would do or blackberry juice. No, that's too purpley. Oh, Jamesy, let me up out of this. Whoever suggested that business for women, what between clothes and cooking and children, this damned old bed too jingling like the Dickens. I suppose they could hear us away over the other side of the park. Well, I suggested to put the quilt on the floor with a pillow under my bottom. bottom. I wonder, I wonder is, is it nice during the day? I think, I think it is easy. It's easy. It's easy. I think I'll cut all this hair off. Cut all this hair off. Scald it. I might put my look like a young girl. Wouldn't he get the great suck the next time he turned up my clothes on me? I'd give anything to see his face. Where's the chamber gone? Easy, I have a holy horror that's horror breaking under me after I open it. I, mode. I wonder, was I too heavy sitting on his knee? I made him sit on the easy chair purposely when I took off only my blouse and skirt first in the other room. He was so busy, was so busy where he oughtn't to be. He never felt me. I hope my breath was sweet after those easy outfits. I remember one time I could scout it out straight, whistling like a man almost. Easy. Lord, how noisy. I hope there are bubbles on it for a wad of money from some fellow. I'll have, I'll have to perfume him in the morning, don't forget. I bet he never saw a better pair of thighs than that. Look how white they are. Look how white they are. The smoothest place is right there, between this bit here. Soft like a peach. Soft like a peach. Easy, God. I wouldn't mind being a man and get up on a lovely woman. Oh, Lord, what a row you're making like Jersey lilies. Easy. Easy, easy. Oh, how the water is oh, coming down, water water come down at Lahore. Who knows? Who knows? Is there anything, is there anything in that my side? Or have I something grown in me? Getting that thing like that every week. When was it last time? Monday. Yes, it's only about three weeks. I have to go to the doctor, only it would be like before I married him. When I had that white thing coming from me, and Chloe made me go to that dry old stick Dr. Collins for women's diseases on women's diseases on Pembroke Road. Your vagina, he called it. I suppose that's how he got all the gilt mirrors and carpets, getting around those rich ones off Stephen's Green, running up to him for every little fiddle faddle. Her vagina and her coach in China. They've money, of course, so they're all right. I wouldn't marry him, not if he was the last man in the world.
Besides, Besides there's something queer, queer about, about their children, children always, always smelling, smelling around those filthy bitches all sides, asking me if what I did had an offensive odor. What did he want me to do but the one thing? Gold, maybe. What a question. If I smathered it all over his wrinkly old face for him with all my compliments, I suppose he'd know then. And, and could you pass it easily? Pass what? Pass what? I thought, I thought he was talking about the Rock of Gibraltar, the way he put it. That's a very nice invention, too, by the way. Only I like letting myself down after the hole as far as I can squeeze and pull the chain and flush it. Nice cool nice pins, cool and, pins needles. and needles. Still, there's something in it, I suppose. I always used to know by Millie's when she was a child whether she had worms or not. Still, all the same, paying him for that. How much is that doctor? One guinea, please. And asking me had I frequent omissions. Where do those old fellows get all the words they have? Omissions with his short-sighted eyes on me cocked sideways. I wouldn't trust, I wouldn't trust him too far to give me chloroform, give me chloroform God, knows God knows what else. Still, I liked him when he sat down to write the thing out. Frowning so severe, his nose intelligent like that. He'd be damned, you lying strap. Oh, anything. No matter who, except an idiot. I was clever enough to spot that, of course. That was all, that was all thinking of him. And his mad, crazy letters. My precious one. Everything connected with your glorious body. Everything, Everything underlined, underlined that, that comes from it is a thing of beauty and of joy forever. Something, something he got out of some nonsensical book that he had me always at myself four and five times a day sometimes. And I said, and I, said, I, said I had it. Are you sure? sure? Oh, oh yes, yes, I said. I am quite sure, sure, sure in a way that shut him up. I knew what was, I knew what was coming next. Coming next. Only, only natural weakness, only natural was. weakness it was. He excited, he excited me. me. I don't know, I don't know how. how. The first the night, first night, night ever we met, when, when I was living in Rehoboth Terrace, we stood staring at one another for about ten minutes we met somewhere. I suppose on account of my being Jewish looking after my mother, he used to amuse me. The things he said with the half slithering smile on him, and all the Doyles said he was going to stand for a member of parliament. Now wasn't I the born oh, fool to believe I was blather about home and rule and the land league, sending me to that long stool of a song out of the Huguenots who sing in French to be more classy. Oh, beau pays de la Touraine. That I never even sang once. Explaining and rigmaroling about religion and persecution, he won't let you enjoy anything naturally. Then might he as a great favor. The very first opportunity, he got a chance in Brighton Square running into my bedroom, pretending the ink got on his hands to wash it off with the Albion sulfur soap I used, and the gelatin still around it. Oh, I left myself sick at him that day. I'd better not make an all-night sitting on this affair. They ought to make chambers a natural size so that a woman could sit on it properly. He kneels down to do it. I suppose, I suppose there isn't in all creation isn't another all man with the habits he has. Look at the way, Look at the way he's sleeping at the foot of the bed. How can he without a hard bolster? It's well he doesn't care. He might knock out all my teeth. Breathing with his hand on his nose. Like that Indian god he took me to show one wet Sunday in the museum in Kildare Street. All yellow, all yellow in a pinafore, lying on his side on his hand with his ten toes sticking out. That, that he said was a bigger religion than the Jews, Jews and our lords, lords both, both put together, put together all, all over Asia, Asia. Asia. imitating him as he's always imitating everybody. I suppose he used to sleep at the foot of the bed, too, with his big square feet up in his wife's mouth. Damn this stinking thing, anyway. Where's this Those napkins are. Ah, yes, yes, I know. I hope the old press doesn't creak. Oh, I knew it would. He's sleeping hard. Had a, had a good time somewhere. Still, so she must have given him great value for his money. money. Of, course, of, course, of course, he has to pay for it from her. This oh, nuisance of a thing. Nuisance thing. Of a thing. I hope they'll have something, better, have something well. better for us in the other world. Tying ourselves up. God help us. That's all right for tonight. Now the lumpy old jiggly bed always reminds me of old Cohen. I suppose he scratched himself in it often enough. And he thinks father bought it from Lord Napier that I used to admire when I was a little girl because I told him easy piano. Oh, I like my bed. God. Here we are as bad as ever after 16 years. How many houses were we in at all? Raymond Terrace. Raymond Terrace in Ontario Terrace. Lombard Holly Street. Tallest Street. And he goes about whistling every time again.
his human eyes the frogs, 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 frogs march, pretending, pretending to have the men with their four sticks of furniture. And then the city arms hotel. Worse and worse, says Warden Daly. But Charlie Thomas is landing. Always somebody inside praying, then leaving all their stinks after them. Always, always know who was in there last. Every time we're just getting on right, something happens. Or he puts his big foot in it. Tom's and Helly's and Mr. Cuff's and Drimmy's. Either he's going to be run into, run into prison over his old lottery tickets that was to be all our salvation, or he goes and gives impudence. We'll have him coming home with the sack soon. Out of the Freeman, too, like the rest, on account of those sin of fame or the Freemasons. Then we'll see the old man wishing and dribbling along in the wet, all by himself round by Cody's lane, will give him much consolation. But he says he's so capable and sincerely Irish. He is indeed judging by the sincerity of the trousers I saw on him. Wait, Wait there's George's church bells. Wait, three quarters, quarters the hour, wait, one, two wait, o'clock. two o'clock? Wow. Well, that's a nice that's hour of the night for him to be coming home to anybody, anybody down, down the area. area. If anybody saw him, I'll knock him off that little habit tomorrow. First, I'll look at his shirt to see. Or I'll see if he has that French letter still in his pocketbook. I suppose he thinks I don't know deceitful men. All their twenty pockets aren't enough for their lives. Then why, why should we tell, we tell them? them? Even if, if it's, it's the, the truth, truth, they don't believe you. Then, then tucked up in bed like those babies in the aristocrat's masterpiece, he brought me another time. Brought me another time. As if we as had, had enough of that in real life with that real life. Whatever his name is, whatever his name is, disgusting you more with those rotten pictures. Children with two heads and no legs. That's the kind of villainy they're always dreaming about, with not another thing in their empty heads. They ought to get slow poison in half of them. Then tea and toast for him, buttered on both sides and new laid eggs. I suppose I'm nothing anymore. When I wouldn't let him lick me in Hollow Street one night. Man, man, tyrant as ever. For the one thing, he slept on the floor half the night, naked, the way the Jews used when somebody dies belong to them and wouldn't eat any breakfast or speak a word wanting to be petted. So I thought I stood out enough for one time and let him. He does it all wrong, too, thinking only of his own pleasure. His tongue is too flat. I don't know why. He forgets that when I don't, I'll make him do it again if he doesn't mind himself, and lock him down to sleep in the coal cellar with the black beetles. I wonder, was it hurt for Josie? Off her head with my cast-offs. He's such a born liar, too. No, he'll no, he never, never have the courage with a married woman. That's why he wants, That's why he wants me in Boylan. Though, as for her though Dennis, as, for her as, she calls as, Dennis him, as she calls him, that forlorn-looking spectacle, spectacle, you couldn't call him him a husband. husband. Yes, it's some, some little bitch he's got, he's got in with. Even, even when, when I was with him, him. With, with Millie, Millie called races. races. That horn blow with the child on it on the top of his knobs. Let us in him by the back back way. He was throwing his sheep's eyes at those two. Eyes at those two. Doing skirt duty up and, up and down. down. I tried to wink at him first. first, first. That's that's no, no use, of course. course. And, and that's, that's the way his money goes. goes. This is the fruits of Mr. Patty Dignam. Great style, the grand great style at the grand funeral in the paper Boylan brought in. If they saw a real officer's funeral, that'd be something. Reversed arms, muffled drums, the poor, the poor horse walking behind in black. black. El Boom and Tom Kernan, that drunken little barely man that bit his tongue off falling down the men's WC, drunk in some place or other. And Martin Cunningham and the two Daedaluses and Fanny McCoy's husband, husband white head of cabbage, skinny thing with a turn in her eye, trying to sing my songs. She wanted to be born all over again, and her old green dress with the low neck, as she can't attract them any other way. Like dabbling on a rainy day. I see it all now plainly, and they call that friendship. Killing, killing and then burying one another, and, and they all with their wives and families at home more, especially, especially Jack Power, Power keeping that barmaid he does. Of, of course, his wife is always sick or going to be sick or just getting better of it. And he's a good-looking man still, though he's getting a bit gray over the years. They're a nice lot, all of them. Well, they're not going to get my husband again into their clutches if I can help it. Making fun of him then behind his back, I know well. 
when he goes on with his idiotics. idiotics. Because he has sense enough not to squander every penny piece he earns down their gullets and looks after his wife and family. Good for nothing. Poor Patty Dignam. All the same. All the same. I'm sorry in a way for him. What are his wife and five children going to do? Unless he's insured. Comical little teetotum. Always stuck up in some pub corner, and her or her son waiting. Bill Bailey, won't you please come home? Her widow's ways won't improve her appearance. They're awfully becoming, though, if you're good looking. What man? What man? Wasn't he? Wasn't he? Yes, he was at the Glen Cree dinner in Ben Dollard Bass Barrel Town. The night he borrowed the Swallowtail to sing out of in Hollis Street, squeezed and squashed, and squashed into, into them, them and grinning all over his big dolly face like a well-whipped child's body. Didn't he look a ball of bollocks? Sure enough, that must have been a spectacle on the stage. Imagine paying five in the preserved seats for that. To see, to see him, him trotting, trotting off, off in his trousers, and Simon Taylor, too, too. He, was he was always turning on half screwed, screwed, singing the second verse first. The old the love is the new is one of his. his. So, so, so sweet he sang the maiden on the hawthorn bough. He was always on for flirtifying, too. When I sang Mary Tana with him at Freddie Mayer's private opera, he had a delicious, glorious voice. Phoebe, dearest, goodbye, sweetheart. Sweetheart, he always sang it. Not, Not like Bartle Darcy's sweet tart goodbye. Of course, he had the gift of the voice, so there was no art in it. All over you like a warm shower bath. Oh, Mary Tana, wildwood flower. We sang splendidly. Though it was a bit too high for my register, he even transpose. And he was married at the time to May Goulding. But then he'd say or do something to knock the good out of it. He's a widow, a widower now. I wonder what sort is his son. His son. He, says he says he's, he's an, an author and going to be a university professor of Italian. And I'm to take, and I'm to take lessons. lessons. What, is what is he driving at now? Showing, showing him my photo. photo. It's not good, it's not good of me. I ought to have got, I ought to have got, got it taken in. in. Drapery, Drapery that never looks out of fashion. Still, Still I look I young in it. I wonder if he didn't make him a present of it altogether. And me, too, after all. Why not? I saw, I saw him driving down to the Kingsbridge, Kingsbridge Station with his father and mother. And mother. I was, I was in mourning. mourning. That's 11 years ago now. Yes, he'd be 11. Yes, he'd be 11. Though, so what was the good in going into mourning for what was neither one thing nor the other? The first cry was enough for me. I had heard the death watch, too, taking him on the wall. Of course, of course, he insisted. He'd go into mourning, He'd go into mourning for the cat. I suppose. I suppose he's, a man now by this time. he's a man now by this time. He was an innocent, was an innocent boy then, boy then and, and a darling little fellow in his Lord Fauntleroy suit and curly hair like a prince on the stage when I saw him at Matt Dillon's. He liked me too, I remember. They all do. Wait, by God. Yes, wait. Yes, yes, yes hold wait. on. Oh, yes, hold on. The cards this morning when I laid out the deck. You knew the young stranger, neither dark nor fair, you met before. Neither dark nor fair, you met before. But he's no chicken nor a stranger either. But he's no chicken nor a stranger My face was turned the other way. Besides, my face was turned the other way. What was the seventh card after that? What was the seventh card after that? Ten of spades for a journey by land. Then there was a letter on its way. And there was a letter on its way. Two, three queens, three queen diamonds, and the eight of diamonds for a rise in society. Yes, wait, it all came out. Yes, and two red, two red eights, eights for new garments. Look at that. Look at that. And didn't, that. I, didn't and didn't I dream something, too? too. Yes, yes, there was, there was something, something about poetry, poetry in it. In it. I, I hope he has, he has long, long greasy hair hanging into his eyes. Or standing, or standing up in a red, red, red Indian. What do they go about like that for? Only getting themselves in their poetry laughed at. I was like poetry when I was a girl. First I thought he was a poet like Lord Byron, and not an ounce of it in his composition. I thought, I thought he was quite, quite different. different. I wonder, is he too young? He's about, he's about 88. 88. I was yeah. married 88. Millie is 15, 15 yesterday. yesterday, 89. What age was, what age was he then? Five or six. About 88. About 88. I suppose he's 20 or more. I'm not too I'm old not too for him. Old. Old. He's 23 or 24. 23 or 24. I hope not that he's stuck, stuck on the university student sword. No, otherwise he wouldn't go sitting down in the old kitchen with him, taking up his cocoa and talking. Of course, of course he pretended to understand it all. Probably he told him he was out of Trinity College. He's very young to be a professor. I hope he's not a professor as good as he was. He was a potent professor of John Jameson. 
They all, they all write, write about some, some woman in their poetry. poetry. Well, I well, suppose, I suppose you, you won't find many, find many like, like me. me. Where softly sighs of love. The light guitar, where poetry is in the air, the blue sea and the moon shining so beautifully, coming back on the night boat from Tarifa. The lighthouse at Europa Point, the guitar that fellow played was so expressive. Will I ever go back there again? All new faces. Two glancing eyes on his head. A lattice in that form. There are my eyes as he's anything of a poet. Two eyes as darkly bright as love's own star. Aren't those, those beautiful words? As love's young star. It'll be a change the Lord knows to have an intelligent person to talk to about yourself. Not always listening to him and Billy Prescott's ad and Keyes' ad and Tom the Devil's ad. Then if anything goes wrong in their business, we have to suffer. Suffer. I'm sure he's very distinguished. I'd like to meet a man like that. God, not those other ruck. Besides, he's young. Those fine young men I could see down in Margaret's grand bathing place from the side of the rock. Standing up in the sun naked like a god or something. And then plunging into the sea with them. Why aren't all men like that? There'd be some consolation for a woman. Like that lovely little statue he bought. I could look at him all day long. Curly head and his shoulders, his finger up for you to listen. There's very good real poetry for you. I always felt I wanted to kiss him all over. Also, his lovely young cock there, so simple. I wouldn't mind taking him in my mouth and I was looking. As if it would ask me to suck it. So clean and white he looks with his boyish face. I would too in half a minute. Even if some went down. What? what? It's, only it's only like gruel or the dew. There's, There's no, no danger. danger. Besides, Besides, he'd be so, so clean compared to those, those pigs, pigs and men. men. I suppose he never, never dreamed of one year's end to the other. One year's end. Most, most of them. Most of them only. That's, that's, that's what gives the women the mustaches, I'm sure. sure. It'll, It'll be grand if I can only get in with a handsome young poet at my age. I'll throw them the first thing in the morning until I see if the witch card comes out. Or I'll, or I'll try pairing the lady yourself and see if he comes out. I'll read and study all I can find. Or learn a bit off by heart. If I knew what he likes so he won't think me stupid. If he thinks all women are the same, I can teach him the other, the other part. part. I'll make him feel, I'll make him feel all, all over me until he faints under, under, under me. Then he'll then write, write about me. About me. Lover, lover and mistress, and publicly, publicly too, with our two, two photographs of all the papers, when, when he becomes famous. Oh, but then, but then, what, then what am I going to do about him, though? No, no that's no, that's way. no, that's way, no way for him. Has he no manners? Has he no manners? Nor no refinement? Nor no nothing in his nature? nature? Slapping us behind like that on my bottom because I didn't call him Hugh the ignoramus that doesn't know poetry from a cabbage. That's what you get, that's what you get, that's what you get for not keeping them in their proper place. Pulling off his shoes and trousers there on the chair before me. So barefaced without even asking permission. And standing out that vulgar way in half of a shirt they wear to be admired. Like, like a priest, priest or a butcher or those old hypocrites in the time of Julius Caesar. Of course, he's of course right, he's right enough in his way to pass the time as a joke. Sure. You might as well be in bed with what? With a, with a lion. Gosh, I'm sure, sure he'd have something, something better to say for himself. An old lion, An old lion would. Well, I suppose it's because, well, I suppose it's because they are so plump and tempting in my short petticoat. He couldn't resist. They excite myself sometimes. Sometimes. It's well for men all the amount of pleasure they get off of his body. We're so round and white for them always. I wish I was one myself I wish I was one myself for a change just to try. With that thing they have swelling up on you, so hard and at the same time so soft when you touch it. My uncle's John has a thing wrong. I heard those corner boys saying, passing the corner of Maribone Lane. My Aunt Mary has a thing hair because it was dark and they knew a girl was passing. Make me blush. Didn't make me Why blush. Should Why should I either? It's only nature. It's only nature. And he puts this thing long into my Aunt Mary's hair, etc. Et 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 and turns out to be you put the handle on a sweeping brush. Men again. Men again all over. They can pick and choose, but they marry women. A married woman or a fast widow or a girl for their different tastes, like those houses around behind Irish Street. No, but we're to be always chained up. They're not going to be chaining me up. No damn fear once I start, I tell you. I tell you. For their stupid. Their stupid husband's jealousy. Why can't we all remain friends over it instead of quarreling? Her husband found it out, what they did together. Well, naturally. 
And if, and if he did, did can he undo it? He's Coronado anyway, whatever he does. And then he going to the other mad extreme about the wife and fair tyrants. Of course, the man never even catches a second thought on the husband or wife either. It's the woman he wants, and he gets her. What else were we given all those desires for? I'd like to know. I'd like to know. I can't help it if I'm young still, can I? It's a wonder I'm, it's a wonder I'm not an old shriveled hag before my time. Living with him. Living with him. So cold. Never embracing me. Except sometimes when he's asleep. The wrong end of me. Not knowing, I suppose, who he has. Any man that kiss a kiss bottom, I throw my hat at him. After, After that, that he'd kiss anything, anything unnatural, where we haven't one atom, haven't one atom, atom of any kind of expression in us, all of us the same two lumps of lard. Before, before ever I do that to a man, <sighs> the dirty brutes, the mere thought is enough. I kiss, I kiss the feet, feet of you, Senorita. Senorita. There's, some There's some sense in that. In that. Didn't, he Didn't he kiss our hall door? door? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. What, a what a madman. Nobody, Nobody, Nobody understands his cracked ideas, ideas but me. Still, of course, he wants to be embraced 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 times a day, almost to make her look young. No matter by who. So long as to be loved or loved by somebody. If the fellow who you want isn't there, sometimes, by the Lord God, I was thinking... I was thinking, would I go around by the quays there some dark evening, if nobody would know me, and pick up a sailor off the sea that'd be hot on for it, and not care a pin whose I was, only do it off up in a gate somewhere, or one of those wild-looking gypsies in the farm, had their camp pitched near the Bloomfield lawn trying to steal our things if they could. I only sent mine there a few times for the name, Model Laundry, sending me back over and over some old one's odd stockings. That blacker-looking fellow with fine eyes peeling a switch, attack me in the dark and ride me up against the wall without a word. Or a murderer. Anybody. What they do themselves. The fine gentlemen in their silk hats. That KC lives up somewhere this way. Coming out of Hard Lane. The night he gave us the fish supper on account of winning over a boxing match. Of course it was for me he gave it. I knew you by his gators in the walk. And when I turned round a minute after just to see... There was a woman after coming out of it too, some filthy prostitute. Then he goes home to his wife after that. Only I suppose the half of those sailors are rotten again with disease. Oh, move over the big carcass out of that. Listen to the love of Mike. Listen to him. Listen to him. The, winds the winds that waft my side to thee. So well we may sleep and sigh. The great suggester Don Poldo de la Flora. If he knew how he came out on the cards this morning, he'd have something to sigh for. A dark man in some complexity, between two sevens, too, in prison for Lord knows what he does that I don't know. And I'm to be smooching around down in the kitchen to get his lordship his breakfast while he's rolled up like a mummy. Will I Will I Did you ever see him running? running. I just like to see myself at it. Show them attention and they treat you like dirt. I don't care what anyone Anybody says, it would be much, much better, better for the world to be governed, governed by the women in it. You, you wouldn't see women going and killing one another and slaughtering. When do you, you ever see, see women rolling around drunk like they do, but gambling every penny they have and losing it on horses? Because a woman, whatever she does, she knows where to stop. Sure, they wouldn't do it well at all for us. They don't know what it is to be a woman and a mother. How could they? Where would they all of them be if they hadn't all a mother to look after? Well, I never had. That's why I suppose he's running wild now, out at night away from his books and studies, and not living at home, on account, on account of the usual rally house, I suppose. Well, it's a poor case that those that have a fine son like that, they're not satisfied, and I none. I none. Was he not able to make one? It wasn't, it wasn't my, my fault. fault. We came, we came together when I was watching the two dogs up in her behind in the middle of the naked street. The naked street that disheartened me altogether. Me altogether. I suppose I ought. I suppose I ought to have buried him in that little woolly jacket I knitted, crying as I was. But give it to some, give it to some, some poor child. child. But I knew well I never had that. Never have another. Our first death too. It was. We were never the same since. Oh, I'm not going to. Oh, I'm not going to. Think myself into the glooms about that anymore. I wonder why he wouldn't stay the night. 
I felt all the time it was somebody strange he brought in. Instead of roving around the city, meeting God knows who, night walkers and pickpockets. His mother wouldn't like, like that if she was alive. Ruining himself for life, perhaps. Still, it's a lovely, lovely hour. hour. So silent. I used, I used to, to love used coming to love home after dances, after the, air the, air the, night. Night. the air of the night. They have friends, they have they have friends they they can talk to, but none. Either, 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 either he wants what he won't get, or it's some woman ready to stick her knife in you. I hate that in women. women. No wonder no they, they treat, treat us the way they do. do. We, we are a dreadful lot of bitches. I suppose it's all the troubles we have make us so snappy. I'm not like that. I'm not like that. He could, he could easy have slept in there on the sofa in the other room. I suppose, I suppose he was as shy as a boy, so he being so young, hardly young. 20, with me in the next room. Me in the next room. Yeah, the He'd have heard me, He'd have heard heard me on the chamber. Uh, what harm, what harm, what harm, harm did I, I wonder? It's like those names, like those names in Gibraltar. De La Paz, De La Gracia. They had the devil's queer names there. Father Villaplana of Santa Maria that gave me the rosary. Rosales y O'Reilly in the Calle Las Siete Revueltas and Pisimbo and Mrs. Opiso in Governor Street. Oh, what a name. I'd go, I'd go and drown, drown myself in the first river, river I'd have to make her. her. Oh, oh my, and all the big streets, streets paradise ramp, ramp, Bedlam ramp, and Rogers ramp, ramp Crutchet's ramp, and the devil's, and the devil's gap steps. 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 Well, well, small blame to me, small blame to me, I'm scared. I know I am a bit. I declare to God I don't feel a day older than then. I wonder, could I get my tongue around any of this span? Como esta usted? Mi buen gracias, y usted? Y usted? See, I haven't forgotten at all. I thought I had. Only for the grammar. A noun is the name of any person, place, or thing. Pity I never tried to read that novel, Cantankerous Mrs. Rubio, Led Me by Valera. With the questions in it all upside down. The two ways I always knew we'd go away in the end. I can tell him the Spanish, and he tell me the Italian. Then he'll, then then he'll, he'll see I'm not so ignorant. What a pity he didn't stay. I'm sure the poor fellow was dead tired and wanted a good sleep badly. I could have brought him in his breakfast in bed with a bit of toast. So long as I didn't do it on the night for bad luck. Or if the woman was going her rounds with the watercress and something nice and tasty. There are a few olives in the kitchen he might like. I never, I never could bear the look of them in a brinis. I could do the criada. The room looks all right since I changed it the other way. You see, something was telling me all the time I'd have to introduce myself, not knowing me from Adam. Very funny, wouldn't it? And his wife. Or pretend, we or pretend we were in Spain with him half awake without a god's notion where he is. Dos huevos estrellados, senor. Lord, the crack things come into my head sometimes. It'd be great fun. Supposing he stayed with us. Why not? There's the room upstairs empty. And Millie's bed in the back room. He could do his writing and studies at the table in there. For all the scribbling, he does at it. And if he wants to read in bed in the morning like me, as he's, As he's making breakfast for one, he can make it for two, I'm sure. I'm not going to, not going to take him Rogers off the street for him. If he takes a cassava of a house like this, I'd have to have a long talk with an intelligent, well-educated person. I'd have to get a nice pair of red slippers. I'd have to get a nice pair of red slippers, like those Turks with the Fez used to sell, or yellow, and a nice semi-transparent morning gown to my bad watch, or a peach blossom dressing jacket like the one long ago in Walpole's, only eight six. Or 18 I'll, just I'll just give, give him, him one more chance. chance. I'll, I'll get, get up early in the morning. morning. I'm, I'm so sick, sick of Cohen's old bed in any case. I might, I might go over to the market to see all the vegetables and cabbages and tomatoes and carrots and all kinds of splendid fruits. All coming in lovely and fresh. Who knows who'd be the first man I'd meet? They're out looking, They're out looking for it in the morning. Mammy Dillon used to say they are. And the night, too. That was her mass going. I'd love a big well, juicy pear now, melt in your mouth, melt your mouth. Melt your mouth. Melt like when I used to be in the long way. 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 Then I'll throw him up his eggs and tea in the mustache cup she gave him to make his mouth bigger. I suppose he'd like my nice cream, too. I know what I'll do. I'll go about rather gay. Not too much sense. A bit now and then. Me fa pie pie the mustache. Then I'll start dressing myself to go out. Pris, non sul pio forte. 
I'll put, I'll put on my best shift and drawers. Let him have a good eyeful of that to make Sam stand for him. I'll let him know that's what he wanted. That's his wife is fucked. Yes, yes, and damn well fucked too. Up to my neck, nearly not by him. Nearly not by him. Five old or six years old. Nearly not by him. 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 Nearly not by Unless, Unless I made, I made him, him stand, stand there and put him into me. Put him in. Never mind to tell him that every scrap to tell him every scrap and make him, 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 and do, make him do it out in front of me. Serve him right. Serve him right. It's, all it's, all it's, all it's all his own fault if I'm an adulteress, as the thing in the gallery said. Oh, much about it. That's harm. Ever much as it is a veil of tears. God knows it's not much. Doesn't everybody? Only they hide it. I suppose that's what a woman is supposed to be there for. Or he wouldn't have made us, or he wouldn't have made us the way he did. So attractive to men. Then if he wants to kiss my bottom, I'll try and open my doors and bulge it right out in his right face, as large as life. life. He can stick, he can stick his tongue seven, seven miles up my hole as he's there, my brown, brown part. Then I'll tell him I want one pound, or perhaps thirty. I'll tell him I want to buy underclothes. Then if he gives me that, well, he won't be too bad. I don't want to soak it all out of him like other women do. I could often have written out a fine check for myself and write his name on it for a couple of pounds. A few times he forgot to lock it up. Besides, he won't spend it. I'll let him do it off on me, behind, provided he doesn't smear all my good drawers. Oh, I suppose that can't be helped. I'll do the indifferent one or two questions. I'll know by the answers. When he's like that, he can't keep a thing back. I know every turn in him. I'll tighten my bottom well and let out a few smutty words. Smell romper, lick my shit, or the first mad thing comes, comes into my head. head. Then I'll suggest about... Yes. Oh, wait, now, Sonny, my, my turn is coming. I'll be quite gay and friendly over it. Oh, but I was forgetting this bloody pest of a thing. <laughs> you wouldn't know which to laugh or cry for such a mixture of plum and apple. No, no, I'll have to wear the old wear things. The old things. So, much so much the better. It'll be more pointed. He'll never know whether he did it or not. There, that's good enough for you. Any old thing at all. Then I'll wipe him off me just like a business. His omission. Then I'll go out. I'll have him eyeing up at the ceiling. Where has she gone now? Make him want me. That's the, That's the only, only way. way. Quarter after. Quarter a quarter after. after. What an unearthly, an unearthly hour. hour. I suppose, I suppose they're, they're just getting up in China out now, combing, combing out their pigtails for the day. day. We'll, we'll soon have the nuns ringing the angels. There's nobody really else to come in to sleep there except an odd priest or two for his night office. Or the alarm clock next door at Cock Shop. Clattering the brains out of itself. Let me see if I can doze off. One, two, two, three, four, four, five. What kind of flowers are those they invented like the stars? The wallpaper, the wallpaper in Lombard Street, Street was much nicer. The apron he gave me was, the the apron he gave me was like that something. Only I only wore it twice. Better so lower this lamb and try again so as I can get up early. I'll go to Lamb's then beside Finlay's and get them to send, send us some flowers to put about the place. In case he brings them home tomorrow. Today and then. No. No. No, Friday's an unlucky day. First I, want First I want to do the place up some way. The dust grows in it, I think, while I'm asleep. Then we can have music and cigarettes. I can accompany him. First I must clean the keys of the piano with milk. What will I wear? Shall I wear a white rose? Or those fairy cakes, cakes and Lipton's? I love the smell of a rich big shop. It's seven and a half D a pound. Or the other, or the other ones with the cherries in them and the pinky sugar. Eleven pounds of those. A couple of pounds of those. A, of pounds of those. a nice plant in the middle of the table. The table. I'd, get I'd get that, that cheaper in. Wait, wait, where's this? Where's this? this? I, saw I, saw them. I love, love flowers. flowers. I'd, I'd love, love to have the whole place swimming, swimming in roses. roses. God of heaven, there's nothing like nature. The wild, wild mountains, mountains, then the sea, sea and the waves rushing. Then the beautiful country with the fields of oats and wheat and all kinds of things. And all the fine cattle going about. That would, that would do your heart good to see rivers, rivers and lakes and, lakes and flowers. flowers. All, all sorts of shapes, shapes and smells and colors springing, springing up. Even out of the ditches. Primroses, primroses and, violets. and violets. Nature, Nature it is. 
As I was saying, there's no God. I wouldn't give a snap of my two fingers for all their learning. Why don't they go and create something? I often asked him, atheists or whatever they call themselves, go wash the cobbles off themselves first. Then they go howling for the priest and they die. And why? 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 Because they're afraid of hell on account of their bad conscience. Ah, yes, I know them well. Who was the first person in the universe before there was anybody? That made that it all. Made it all? Who? 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 Ah, that they don't know. No, Neither do I, so there you are. They might as well try to stop the sun from rising tomorrow. The sun shines for you, he said. The day we were lying among the rhododendrons on Half Head. In the great sweet suit in his The day I got him to propose to me. Yes. First I gave him a bit of seed cake out of my mouth. And it was leap year, like like year like now. Yes, yes. 16, 16 years, years ago. ago. My God. My God. After, after that long, after that long kiss, kiss, I, I near lost my breath. Yes, yes he, said. he said. He said, I was a flower of the mountain. Flower of the mountain. Yes. 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 yes, so, so we, we are flowers all of woman's body. Yes, that was yes. one, yes, that was that was one, one true thing, thing he said in his life. And the sun shines for you today. Yes, yes. that was why I liked him. Because I saw he understood or felt what a woman is. And I knew I could always get him. And I knew I could always get him. And I gave him all the pleasure I could. Leading him on till he asked. Me to say yes. until he asked me to and say I wouldn't yes. answer first. And I wouldn't answer Only first. looked out over the, sea and, over the sea and the sky. I was thinking of, was so, thinking many of so many things. things. He, didn't he didn't know of Mulvey and Mr. Sanhope and Hester and Father and old Captain Groves and the sailors playing all birds fly. And I say stoop and washing up dishes, they called it on the pier. And the sentry in the governor's house was just being around his white helmet. Poor devil, devil half roasted. roasted. And, and the Spanish, Spanish girls laughing, laughing in their shawls and their tall combs. And the auctions in the morning. And the, Jews, the Greeks and Jews and the Arabs and the, Arabs and the devil knows who else. From, from all the ends, ends of Europe. And Duke, and Duke Street. And the foul market all plucking outside of the And the poor doctor slipping half asleep. And the vague fellows in the cloaks asleep in the shade on the steps. And the, and the big wheels, wheels of the carts of the bulls. And, and the old cows are thousands of years old. Years old. Yes, yes, and those handsome moors all in white and turbans like kings. Like kings. As as asking you to sit, sit down, down in a little bit of a shop and round up at the old windows of the Posadas. Two glancing eyes and lattice hid for her lover to kiss. The iron and wine shops half open at night. And the castanets. And the night we miss the bow in Algeciras. The watchman going, going about serene with his lamp. lamp. And, and oh, oh, that awful down, 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 down torrent. Oh, and, and the sea. The sea crimson sometimes like fire. And the, the glorious, glorious sunsets. sunsets and, and the fig, fig trees in the made of our gardens. Yes, yes. And all the and all queer little streets. streets. And the pink and blue and yellow houses. And the rose gardens. And the jessamine and geraniums and cactuses. And Gibraltar is a girl where I was a flower, flower of the mountain. mountain. Yes, yes. I put the rose in my hair like, like the Andalusian girls use. Or shall, or shall I wear, I wear red? red? Yes, yes. And how he kissed me kiss in the orange wall. wall. And I thought, well, as well, well, well him as another. Well him as another. And, then and then I asked him with my eyes to ask again. Yes. And then he asked me what I And then he asked me what I would say. Yes, my mountain flower. And first, first I put my arms around her. Yes. yes, and drew, yes. drew her down, down, down to me so you could feel, feel my breasts breast all perfume. Yes, yes. yes. his heart was going, going like mad. mad. Yes. And yes, I said yes, I will. Yes, yes. End of chapter 18. End of Ulysses.